Didn't that sound scary? It did. It scared me. I don't know if we need to do some sort of introduction. We maybe we should, so it's not just like, what the fuck are these people doing? They're just talking to each other, tell, telling each other pirate stories. Yeah, in general, you should do some kind of recap, and then yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, well, we'll I don't know what that. this is going to be. I, I don't, I don't know what this is going to be <clears throat> uploaded to. So I'll just go ahead and say this is a, <laughs> a spinoff from uh, Condor and Crow's Petrifying Future Show, where instead this is. Conquer and Crow's petrifying pirate board. Uh, yeah, campaign, <laughs> campaign. Uh, which, if anyone who's watching this is familiar with the game, uh, the role playing game Bork Board, uh, Pirate Board is a uh, like a spin off uh, storyline that was created by some fans of Bork Board. Uh, it's basically supposed to be like a grim, dark pirate game, whereas Bork Board is more of a medieval. D D S kind of game. So uh this will be a game where it's very easy to die. Uh, you know, a lot of horrible things happen in the game. You don't really get a whole lot of stuff to like protect yourself uh these games. Um you know, so it's pretty common for people to have characters die, sometimes multiple times, like in Chris's yeah. case in our last yeah. uh, board board game. You know, anything can happen, and there are a lot of a lot of different random tables that you can roll that will, you know, have some sort of. Sometimes it'll be like a benefit, like maybe you'll find some. Say you find this weird glittery powder, and you're like I have the smart idea to lick it or or snort it or shove <clears> it in my ass or something, and then you would roll a toughness test and then consult the table for whatever effect, and it could be really good. Maybe you can like levitate or fly or maybe like it'll be really bad and like those were powder you know it was like arsenic or or not arsenic uh, uh what was it what did they send to the white house it was uh anthrax anthrax, anthrax. yeah <laughs> maybe you shoved anthrax up your ass i don't know you know i'm assuming it would be from like a mermaid ass. scratching their ass and then selling it to rubes uh, uh, oh my god i mean why wouldn't you yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I don't think it would smell very good at all. You know. Uh -oh. I mean, but in general, anyway. mermaids wouldn't. I mean, they're fish. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Like human um, fish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, human fish? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what a mermaid is. Is a human fish. Yeah. What a mermaid, is a mermaid a, a fish or is it a mammal, though? Because... They have breath. It probably you does know, depend on what sex you eat. Anyhow, we all went on a little bit of a tangent, which if you are a fan, if you're one of three fans of of Condor Crow, <laughs> <that's my laughs> show, then you may be familiar with uh, our the tangents that Kevin and I often go on. We, actually, our last episode was like the movie was what an hour and a half or something. We had like, long. We had, we had more tangent than movie. Yeah. Yeah, we oh have my like God. 15 minutes yeah. worth of commentary. Yeah, I, I had to chop it, wasn't it down. Really related to the movie very yeah. much. We were talking. I don't know. It was a good. I felt like it was good though. I felt like it was a good episode. But, it was. You know, I always feel like that. But <laughs> unfortunately, for copyright reasons, good. nobody will ever see it. But it was good. Yeah, nobody will ever see no. it. Unfortunately, but... yeah. bastards. Damn the man. Sons of Damn the hell. I wish they would. I, I maybe I shouldn't say what I was getting ready to say. No, I'm gonna. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go ahead and say. It. Too bad they weren't on the tight. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Officially, we don't know that they could have been. Well, well, yeah. Maybe that's like the lesser known thing that they're known for. Is that they were, like, pushing the copyright. They like to sit on uh, public domain movies, the laws, yeah. and deep yeah. sea dives. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's I can see that it's just a you know a rich fat cat pastime. But anyway, okay, so let's. Try, I'm gonna try and steer this ship back to uh, to the game at hand, pirate board. Uh, we didn't record the first session. I don't really remember why. Maybe it was because almost no one. Or, or wait, why? why? Uh, Zoom was scary and nobody had it. It was what? What did you Nobody say? Nobody had access to Zoom. 
Yeah, we oh, just. Oh, yeah, you and I were yeah. the only ones that had Zoom. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, that's probably way to do it. Yeah. Well, uh, some, some things happened. Uh, the the uh, the gang, which I'll let them all introduce themselves here in a moment, but they, they all met in the tiny seaside, shitty little village of Whale Fall. Um, it's uh, kind of a, just a derelict place, a lot of poverty, a lot of violence. Um, it's it's uh, clo- the closest land mass to it is an uninhabited island that uh, houses a gigantic lighthouse uh, It's run by the only human on the island who uh, is the, the lighthouse keeper, which no one seems to know what he looks like or remember anything about him. Uh, although there seems to be a lot of like, there's a lot of gossip about him being um, an alcoholic. But other than that, there's not really anything known about him. There's also a, a herd of, or a flock of feral sheep on the island. Uh, there are rumors that if you go on the island and you try to touch a sheep, then you'll be cursed and you'll be transformed into a sheep. Or if you die on the island, you'll be transformed, you'll be reincarnated as a sheep. A lot of sheep related, you know, mythology for some reason. But uh, anyway, the lighthouse keeper recently in last episode was responsible for a shipwreck because he didn't light the lamp and the ship crashed into it. <clears throat> and basically there's a huge brouhaha melee of, of you know, people stealing cargo. Uh, there was a shark attack. Uh, Corey almost died. His character almost died the first session. I uh, shot the back, uh, broke his arm. Uh, you know, there was a shark attack. A- Aaron's character was bitten in the head and almost killed. Um, and I think he has, if I remember correctly, he has like a penalty to and mental, mental, uh, I think roles for like the next couple days or something, or two days. I think it's like a day or two. Oh, I should have written all this down. You know, well, you know me, I never prepare for anything. Uh, but if everybody wants to go through and explain who they are, what their character's name is, and tell tell us what your favorite color is or favorite dessert or something like that. I'll go first because I'll have to go get my chicken wings when they get delivered here in a second. I'm Dr. Theobor- Theodore Crotchbird, um, back alley surgeon, back alley abortionist. <laughs> and um, I have Princess Beatrice, who is a creature that has me out of like a separate body parts that I've just kind of collected around, gave it consciousness. Uh, eat mystic, so I'm a drinker, I'm like have a good time. And uh, uh, yeah, my hide armor is made out of the preserved skin of some of my other. Not victims, I wouldn't say, but uh, for patients, if you will, yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly yeah. they're not using it, so you might as well put it to us in military use. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're I mean, done. If they're not going to wear it. You might as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted a little off the top, or whatever, you know, or they yeah. you shaved, yeah. it, shaved it off, and they were just going to throw it <laughs> in the trash anyway. Exactly. Uh, Kevin, <clears throat> do you want to go ahead, and go and uh, talk about Pete? Yeah, sure. Um. Got 12 finger Pete. He's uh like five and a half feet tall, uh oily black skin, uh eel face, too many fingers. Uh he's the town blacksmith when he's not traveling the vague sort of area with his cannonball Toby. <laughs> who is his core in life? Oh, are you responsible for uh or no, you're like the survivor of multiple shipwrecks or something like that? Toby's a bit clumsy. He might have been <laughs> present when several ships went down. He can't be blamed. He's in it special. <laughs> I just imagine you being the same thing every time. You're just like carrying him and then you yeah. strip over something and drop it and it just goes It's such a floor. great evening for a stroll, Toby. Let's go out to the deck and look around. No, Toby! Why are you doing this again? No! Don't you have like a little face drawn on him also? Of course Toby has a face. How else does he communicate? Yeah. But, well, there's that like uh, there was like a test that was done years ago where like these like psychiatrists or or psychologists or some sort of brain a brain person brainologist a professional brain 
Phrenologist, yeah. Phrenologist, yeah. They like put fake eyes on different inanimate objects and like like they would do that to a bike and then they would not chain it up, like put not put a bike lock on it and then go into a place and people wouldn't steal it. But then if they just took like a regular bike with no eyes or whatever, then people and they didn't chain it up or whatever, people would take it. It's like people feel paranoid because there's a face. Well they have a certain amount of people empathy really for respond. the googly eyes. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like big googly eyes or something, you know. And uh it's like people it's a weird thing that people have. Like they just it's like the feel like maybe it's like subconsciously we feel like we're being watched. I kind of want to test you know? that now. <laughs> yeah, you should. I mean that sounds fantastic. But obviously it has its limits. I'm sure that if you put googly eyes on a hundred dollar bill and left it outside, then probably that would require me to have a hundred dollar bill to test. So oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm lucky I could go buy these sticky googly eyes. Yeah. And I wasn't going to put it on yeah, my things. I would put it on other people's things and leave them around. I liked all the googly eyes on everything, everywhere, all at once. I, I love that movie. That was a yeah. good movie. It was a good uh, pro googly eye movie, you know. It's true. Not enough, not enough filmmakers are brave enough to, you know, come out and say, hey, I am. I was like, I was trying to do a bit and it didn't fucking work. I don't know. Who who, forgot, who, who cares? Let's move on. Who's who's next? Aaron, you want to go? Or Chris? Who, whoever? We don't have sure. everyone here tonight, also, by the way. Uh, Evan and Derek are not here, which Derek wasn't here last time. So who knows? He might, he might never come back. You never know. Um, this is my first time doing any kind of game like this. So. I got lost a lot last time. Everybody kept on <laughs> saying, hey, Turtle, are you there? A heavy uh, sleeper. He's a heavy sleeper. Yeah. Um, I just Googled turtle puns and accidentally said Michael Shelps. So that's my name. <laughs> um, I'm like a it. sorcerer turtle man. Uh, I... And impulsive. I have some matted dreads. Uh, rats are my favorite meal. I live in a cave under the docks. Uh, I like come <laughs> out live in a bridge down zero. by the river. That's right. <laughs> and I wear rags. I don't get out much. And I bite if I get scared. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. Did you try to bite uh, Corey's monster? Yeah. <laughs> And you have a cool ridge of like uh shark teeth down the down the middle of your head now. Oh yeah, yep. from the shark yeah, the shark bit you yeah. in the head and yeah. <laughs> and now you have brain you have temporary brain damage or something. And I am Bradwick the Bound. I'm a buccaneer. And I don't have a whole lot, but I've got a boat. Her name is Mother. And what I'm really looking for is my father's bones because there is a map there and then if i can get that get that treasure i'll be set oh yeah i, I forgot about all that yeah i like that and uh oh you also murdered someone with a bottle last time i did murder someone with a bottle and didn't you shoot the shark also after evan yes. stabbed it yeah i was yeah. kicking some ass yeah it went a lot better for you than last, uh, last session. Yeah. Not so good for Corey, though. Corey almost died. Yeah. He got shot by an old man. And then he fell over and, you know, snapped his arm. Uh, oh, I guess I'll also mention uh, Evan's character, who is a brute, which uh, and he, I think he's like, a, he, oh, yeah, he's called Keystador Armor uh, because he was a, he is a, uh, am, he has amnesia, but he, remembers that he used to be an officer, like he used to be in the military of, to some degree. And he is like one of the, uh, one of four guards that are on the island. But he kind of operates a little independently of them. Um, but last session, they came, they ended up coming down to the shipwreck and uh, trying to loot it before the mayor woke up. Uh, but uh, I don't know really anything about Derek's character. I know he posted it on the messenger group, but I 
I, it's been a while since I looked at it and he wasn't in last session. So I didn't get a chance to look at it, you know, then, uh, but he'll just introduce himself, you know, whenever, or he won't, if he doesn't, know. we'll just have to see. Uh, anyway, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, uh, Star, which everyone I think was headed towards the shore if they were were already on the shore. Yeah. And, and I'll say once you guys do that, Evans' character, whose name escapes me right now, uh, he uh, tells you that he's going to help the other guards uh, with their boat because they have a, a net that's like full of different things that they've taken from this. A different cargo from this uh this ship that's on fire uh, and so he leaves you guys people some people are still like really freaked out like you you see people like kind of flinching and cringing and looking at Corey's monster princess beatrice and Trice. okay is Cora still there, or is he getting his wings? No, he's there. But okay. I thought I couldn't. I couldn't see you. Sorry. I'm right here. <laughs> I made my wings though. <laughs> my eyes aren't what they used to be. Okay, so people are like still looking at Princess B, and they're just kind of freaked out by her. I have her do like I go. Some kind of like calming demeanor, you know what I mean? We're just having like her... sit down, yeah. Oh, you're just gonna try to like get her to sit down and stuff. So, okay, so she's not really freaked out right now. She so she just you don't really have to roll to do it. You, she's just excited. She wants she's she sees all these people, but like you, you know, get her to kind of chill out, just kind of put your hand on her reassuringly. And she just kind of, you know, crouches down. She's still holding on to, or, well, she was holding on to Evan's hand before he left, which you did find kind of strange. Uh, it wasn't strange. It was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, now she's just kind of sitting there crouched down. And you hear like some woman's voice. She's like, what is that thing? Okay. It's my daughter. I'm going to go yell at that lady. Like, hey. You don't judge people like that. She's not, not a okay. thing. Yeah. She's not a thing. She's engaged to be married to the tall guy. <clears throat> she's like, she's like, where's all of her skin? She's like, why is she bleeding everywhere? Why is she so tall? Hey, hey mind your own business. If you removed all of your skin too, perhaps you would be taller. <laughs> why aren't you bleeding everywhere? Uh-huh. See, this guy knows. Speaking of which, can you help me with my boxes? They're right next to your boat. Yeah, she's like that's on. She's like it's unnatural. I'm gonna go get the the guards, and you see, like the guards are on the on the dock, and they're just like pulling in uh, this big net full of just different crate wet crates that they pulled out of the water. You see some of the livestock that had uh, jumped ship, including that mean hen that pecked Chris last time, washes mm -hmm. ashore. The evil chicken on a piece of on a piece of detritus from the ship. And uh, a, a couple sheep, or not sheep, a couple goats uh, walk onto the onto the shore as well. I want to shoot at the chicken. Okay. Make a presence test. Excuse me. Uh, 12. All right. 12, you say? Yep. That's a normal roll, which I think <clears throat> unless the chicken has some sort of special I mean arcane powers. Yeah. <laughs> this is clearly an evil chicken. It's not a normal chicken. It's very mean. So okay, so go ahead and roll for damage. Uh six. All right. So you blow the chicken's head off with your gun. <laughs> Fuck that chicken. And the chicken doesn't fall down though. It, it does the head grow around. back? 
It runs around in circles as they are known to do it at times. Uh, but it, it seems to be running erratically at first. And then it just suddenly charges at Chris. Chris, make an agility test. Oh my god. <laughs> Always consequences for fucking with a chicken. Uh-huh. It's true. If the Legend of Zelda has taught you anything. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, 15. Okay, so the chicken charges towards you and and leaps with its clawed feet forward, but you manage to duck out of the way. <laughs> it whizzes past you, fluttering its wings. And wandering out, or like just running in place, just blood gurgling from its its headless neck. This thing turning around? No, it's just standing there. <clears throat> just standing in place. <clears throat> well, it's not standing, I mean, it's dancing in place. Almost. Not literally dancing, but it's just kind of like, you know. Somebody should kick it. <laughs> so you guys can go for it. Somebody wants to try and take a kick at the chicken. No, I'm not messing with the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> this is clearly a cursed chicken. I'm not going anywhere near it. Hell, my paper towel. Oh, <laughs> paper towel. I'm not going to go for it. Uh, let me see if Toby wants to go near it, though. Hang on. Is someone going to kick it? All right, so Toby, though, I, I'm completely opposed to doing this, but Toby wants to go after it. So are you going to just drop your bullet or your, your cannonball on? Toby's going to roll out. Yeah, Toby's going to charge at it. Okay. So what's your, what'd you roll? Oh, uh, for that's a presence, yeah? Yeah. I rolled a two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is so why Toby like, takes ships. You're like, all right, Toby. And Toby, like, flies out of your hand, but then lands with a thud directly behind the chicken and just sinks in the sand. The chicken like the chicken like leaps like to face you now uh because it was, you know, didn't really know what to do, but it felt the ground. Uh now Kevin I say no, it wasn't me, test. it was him. <laughs> roll an agility test as the headless chicken bounds at you. Oh talent spared. That is a 14. No, wait, uh, okay. 13 plus 16. I actually okay. have agility of this game. So the slippery eel man you are, you managed to slither out of the way of the brainless, eyeless chicken. <laughs> does anyone else you betrayed to, me. Does anyone else want to, to uh, react to this situation or no? Uh, I'm gonna run towards it, but okay, because I'm not quite all right there right now. I'm gonna slip, yeah, and trip deliberately. Okay. <laughs> no, you're, you're gonna you're gonna just run up to it and 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 then do what? You just trying to eat it? Oh, he's just gonna try to eat. It? Okay. Or you just gonna all kind right. of roll on it? <laughs> okay, okay. So you run up to it. Roll a strength uh, test. A strength test. Okay. So it's roll a d20 and add your strength bonus. Okay. And then tell me whatever you whatever you get. Okay, so it'd be a seven. Okay. So you run up and try to assault the chicken, but in its headless frenzy, it dodges out of the way just out of sheer luck. And you go you almost like fall over into like almost go head first into the sand, but you manage to catch yourself at the last moment. Anyone else want to react to the to this? Nobody. I mean, Toby I mean, has chance. So now that you're going after me, I'll stab it. Okay. So I have a double knife attack thing. So let's see. DR, DR 10, so I hit. And then if I hit, the second is an auto hit. Okay. So D... Eight. 
Okay, so what does that look like to you in your in your opinion? What do you think? So it charges at me, I like? pull out my dagger, step it in one side, and step it the other side, and I kind of lose. <laughs> the chicken spasms on the end of your blades, and then then just spurts some more blood from its neck stump, and then expires. Oh, I drink from the stump. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, it's right there in my face. But... Yes. So, like some sort of disgusting slimy vampire you <laughs> drink some of the chicken's blood yeah and absorb it's, it's like a uh it's like a capri strength. sun cut like a when you put the little straw in there uh, yeah. yeah 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 but with chicken blood instead yes with salmonella instead salmonella is the best part Not salmonella fitzgerald <laughs> anyway uh so the chicken is dead uh kevin drank its blood and what are you guys Gonna do now. Mm. The ship is just sink. It's <laughs> you can see the flames from it, and it's just sort of sinking below the surface. Well, I've got this crate of loot. I kind of want to crack it open and see what's inside of it. Yeah, yeah. We should bring in all the boxes. We collected boxes. I wish I like the boxes. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. I don't remember exactly how many you collected, but so many boxes. All the boxes. Also a tangerine. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. If somebody ate it, and they didn't like it. They were like, "Oh, this is disgusting." I remember. Well, that. I didn't eat mine. I just have it. Oh. I was pretty sure someone ate one last time, and then like, they really didn't like it. Or something. They didn't eat my ginger. But... <clears throat> That's important. It's mine. Um. Does anyone have it written down? How many boxes you guys pulled up? I don't think we actually figured it out. Okay. We just had boxes in that. Okay, Yo, I so had, what's that? I had one that would we got pulled up into the boat. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, and then we had the rest in the yeah because we didn't have enough room on the boat. Yeah, so there's like, the one. So, so there's the one that's on the boat, and then there are, there are four others in the like that you guys had strapped to the boat. Yeah, and we had a bunch of uh, gems and loose coins kind of in the bottom of the boat. Yeah, yep. yes, and so for all five of those. You're gonna roll a, a D100. So let's do the first one. All right. So we should each take a box. Oh, I thought I thought someone rolled. I thought someone was rolling. I was just sitting there waiting. I was looking at the oh, table. No. Yeah. So so for each of those boxes, you'll roll a D100. Right. Right. So we should each take a box. Is. Yeah. So, who's rolling for the first one? Don't, don't all of you speak at once. I mean, I got a 28. <laughs> 28? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you open uh, you open the box, and it's got a lot of, uh, like, Spanish moss in there. Almost like it was used Ooh. as, like, padding, you know? Uh, and in the middle of it, is a fine metal flask. Very Ooh. nice metal flask. It's empty, though. But it looks very shiny and fancy. I also keep the boss. Okay. It'll make a nice garnish. All right, next person. Someone roll for me. I don't have a D100 to beat chicken wings. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I guess it'll probably just be Chris rolling for all these, or Chris or Kevin. 86. 86? Yep. All right. You find inside of the box, it's more of like a more of like a strong box than like an actual. Oh, it's like inside of the crate, there is a strong box. Uh, but it doesn't, there's not a lock attached to it. Weirdly, it may have broken off or something. Uh, but inside the strong box, it doesn't take anything to just open it. You find uh, let's see. You find twelve gold doubloons. Oh, which oh, you know, oh. which is strange to you because people typically use silver around here. Nice. Yeah, and you also have the strong box as well if you want to take that with you. It's just like a almost like a like a reinforced lunch box looking kind of thing. Sure. 
Uh, okay, so the third <clears throat> box. If somebody wants to roll for the third box. Go ahead and roll that. See what's in there. Okay. It is 63. 63 is a collection of Four pressed flowers and a love letter. Okay. From uh, a woman. It seems it seems just browsing through it. It seems it's from an a, an older woman who is in love with a younger man. And it's uh, it gets pretty spicy. Ooh. And the the flowers that are pressed and dried, they smell uh, really good as a very soothing aroma. All right. So we have two more boxes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> six. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to have to roll another die. One sec. You find a turd. Oh, I think it's salt. <laughs> Another oh, a gold table. turd? <laughs> Golden turd. All right. Now we'll roll a d20. 18. You find a mummified monkey head. All right, that's what uh you get, Schultz. A mummified monkey head. Cool. Uh, let's see. It says the head speaks. One creature tests spirit or they must obey a one-word command. Ooh. Oh. That could be useful. If you trust monkeys, which you should. Yeah, you should. Uh, it also comes with three little talismans mm. with uh, crude, almost like uh, crude hieroglyphs of different animals, one of which is a monkey. Uh the other is some sort of big flightless bird. And the other is uh, a large horned lizard. Hmm. Okay. But they seem to be made out of some kind of like really smooth wood. <clears> They're <throat> treated with some sort of waxy substance. And I think there's just one. So one more crate then. Uh, Chris, you want to do the last one? Sure. All right. It is 92. Okay. To consult another table. Roll another D100. Oh, my goodness. 25. You find, again, a bunch of Spanish moss just sort of stuffed within this box uh, when you finally get to the bottom of this of this box you find this small ship in a bottle with some sort of like darkish blue liquid and when it moves you can see the tiny sails actually moving mm -hmm. and it seems if you look if you look closely you can see these tiny humanoid creatures walking along on the boat you monkeys it's hard to tell what they are, really. Mm -hmm. At least with the naked eye, you know. Okay. You don't Ooh. drink this bottle. I want to drink it, though. <laughs> I do claim the boss. That's mine. Roll a d4, Kevin. Four. You get four fistfuls of Spanish moss. <sighs> Excellent. I love Spanish moss. My, I, uh, I have a box of different things that I uh, like, different things I collected from my last trip to New Orleans. And oh, has yeah. A of, has a bunch of Spanish moss and it has like some dried shelf fungus. And I have, there's like a, a wasp nest that I found in there. Damn. 
without without wasps. I especially yeah. like all the mites that live inside of it. They're uh, delicious. Oh yeah. Luckily, it's in a Tupperware container, so if there is anything, you know. Well, mine are not hold. sealed for freshness. I, I like the uh, mites to breathe. Yeah. They like they like to breathe. <laughs> Enjoy a nice breath every now and then. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and then you just kind of chew up some moss, or or uh, make it make it a uh, pour some hot water in there, like a tea. I think that would really not be good for your digestive system at all. Are you an eel man? Can you tell me what's good for my uh, digestive oh, system? Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. You are an eel man. It might Sorry. might be good. Might cure your arthritis or whatever you might be. Rheumatism. With. Rheumatism. Rheumatism. Yeah. Isn't that when your hands get all I've got 12 fingers. You're rheumatism scared of is man. an issue. Well, is is it rheumatism though? Like when you get like your hands get like yeah. really gnarled? Yeah. 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 Your hand just becomes like a bony claw. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a very big concern when you have 12 fingers, is what I'm saying. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. All right. So what are you guys gonna do? You got some stuff of varying degrees of uh uh value some more than others uh what are you guys gonna do it's still nighttime people are still screaming and yelling and hooting and hollering and uh some people are dead some people either died from just the collision with the with the rocks uh or they died from being killed by sharks there's still some people that had uh the, the corpses are just floating in the water right mm. now. Um occasionally you'll see one like start to shake like something's eating on it underneath the water. Well, I say we leave this all home for a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you want them to go to the bar? See if we can sell this cask of rum. That sounds like your idea. Uh well it is early in the morning, uh like very early in the morning and, and everything had been closed at the time so aside from like people who have come outside to see what's going on with with all the commotion uh the the tavern is not open right now but clearly with everything that's going on it should be open that would be the charitable thing to do therefore i'm going to help them out to do the right thing by opening up the bar okay. with my tools <laughs> okay <laughs> you're just gonna go up to the bar and start trying to all right. I'm going to pick All the right. lock on the door, yeah. Okay, make a presence test to pick the lock. That is a minus 115. Okay. You managed to pick it relatively easily. So you open up the door. It's what they <laughs> would want. <laughs> All right. Are you guys all just going inside? Yeah. I'll be like, well, looks like they're open. I mean, the door's not locked. You do, you do know that I'm going to try to sell you this cask. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I do want it. I'm going to have um, Brandis Beatrice go back into the chest, and I'm just going to okay. carry my shit in. She contorts her weird body and goes inside of the big crate on wheels, basically, and uh, pulls the lid shut. And so I flip so the open Kevin, sign and go inside. <laughs> Are you guys gonna light any candles or anything? Or lay clearly, they're not. Here? We're not skulking the dark. We're helping them out <laughs> by opening it up because there's people out there who need things. <laughs> I'm not Nobody really jerk. seems to be. No one outside seems to be really too concerned with anything that you guys <laughs> are doing. Like they're all, you know, just rubbernecking the situation with the with the sinking ship and with the crew coming on the shore and some of them being injured, a lot of the you know, a lot of people being dead. Toby is um, a fine upstanding member of this community. I don't know why they would have an issue with me going inside, accompanying them. Well yeah, so far nobody has either either if they did notice they didn't care or no one has noticed. So but you're not um, you're not drawing any attention. I'm gonna go order a drink. Is there you anybody the, there? <laughs> you go up to the bar. No one is behind the bar unless unless they say otherwise. I mean, again, we're only helping them. 
Nobody can get assistance if nobody goes behind the bar to help. <laughs> I'm just yelling. Fine, upstanding member of this community. Uh, Toby's going to serve drinks. Okay. I'll have right. a hummingbird with rum. Does Toby know how to make that? It's a uh, presence? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, Toby got a 19. I mean, he rolled a okay. nat 20, but it's a 19. He's familiar. Yeah, I, I consult with Toby. I uh, go to the shelf, pull out some bottles, and uh, pour that in. Are you charging for it? Or no? I look around for a sign that has prices. That has prices? Is that what you said? Yeah, I look out for a sign that lists uh, <laughs> what they charge for those. Well, there's not a specific... Like, if there's if not there's a not sign, a... then clearly they're free. So I don't know. Well, there's a, there's a sign that has prices, but it doesn't... There's not particularly that how that exact thing is not listed though so obviously it's free <laughs> yeah you're right. you look at you look at the sign and it just says it says grog and and then it says wine and that's it there are only two things on the on the so board. i'm going to turn to brad and say um if you want to help this particular establishment it would be great if you also order some grog so you actually do so here's the thing you know how to make let me jump back a little bit you know how to make that drink you yeah. do not however have all of the ingredients for that drink. So I also can't read. So what? Yeah. I mean, that's a drink yeah. that's made with ice. <laughs> <laughs> I said I go to the shelf and start pouring things in. I didn't say I know how to make it. <laughs> yeah, so you just start mixing a bunch of different things together. Clearly. And Toby then... was, I'm listening to Toby. He yeah, knows yeah. how to make it. I do not. Do you guys have a ratatouille situation kind of going on where he's like directing you what yeah. to do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, so, he's also just a cannibal, and I'm just insane. So yeah. Yeah. One is a cannibal, or not? Not cannibal. <laughs> I meant cannibal. One is a cannonball. The other's insane. Is what I would say. Yeah, but t clearly Toby cannibal knows what to cannonball. do. That so I, I'm man. mixing it based on his directions. Yeah. Mm. Wink, but, wink, but nod, cannibal, nod. cannibal cannonballs should be a band. Like oh, absolutely. That's a good band name. Yeah. I'll take note of that. Again, I also can't write, but I totally wrote it down because Toby knows. Well, uh, Chris, tell me if you are you going to drink the drink, even though it doesn't seem that he well actually make a presence test to see if you even notice like, if it seemed peculiar the way he was making the drink. Uh thirteen. Uh you aren't 100% sure if what he made you was the hummingbird drink that you had asked for. Um, but he hands it to you anyway. Like He goes ahead and hands it to you and tells you that it's free because he's like, I don't see a price for that. But please do buy some grog to support their local business. <laughs> okay. And um, I'll also take a grog. And that'll be, and then I point at the sign. Because again, I can't read it, but I know it's on there. Okay. I hand uh, it over silver. Okay. And if you're telling you if you're going to drink your drink right now, uh, make a toughness test. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go ahead and drink it. Oh. Remember, you're not a goblin anymore. I know. <laughs> 19. <laughs> okay. Maybe I am a goblin still. <laughs> maybe, maybe you are. So you take a drink of, of this drink and it's. Pretty strong. It doesn't taste at all like what you were hoping it would taste like. Uh, but Great. you managed to get it down. It doesn't make you sick. Uh, it's the glass cleaner that gives it the tang. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty sure that he put a little bit of oil in it. Oh. Flushes so you it right out. <laughs> it tastes just not great, but not enough to make you sick. You yeah. drank worse. I put the coin into a. Uh, do I see like a cash register, a till, a jar? Uh, there's a jar. I put it into the jar. Inside the jar currently is a button, uh, some strands of hair, some sort of crumbs. There's a, a dirty bitten thumbnail. And now you've added a piece of silver to it. 
To make room for the coin, I take the hair. <laughs> to make room for the coin, you take the hair. Okay. <laughs> it's too much hair in here. There's not enough room for a coin. <laughs> you, can, you can add a, a few hairs to your to your inventory if you'd like. <laughs> Who knows? I'll come in handy. <laughs> I'll have them get me a. You said they had ale. They have grog and wine. Oh, well, give me a wine. A little bottle of wine. Or According to wine. the sign, it is two silver for wine. I put I it in the sign. I'm going to hand him the silver. And when he goes to grab for it, I'm going to pull it back. <laughs> like a trick. <laughs> okay, make an agility test. Opposed agility test? Yeah, actually, yes. Yes. Opposed agility test. I got 16. I got a 19. Oh, oh gotta be quicker the than the eel, man. The extra fingers. So you offer it to him and it started to take it back, but he reaches well, for it. Yeah, when you see... close your hand, it's not in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you see he's got it between like his extra fingers and like <laughs> And also, you felt a little like static charge uh, when you when you did the the uh, not you, uh, Kevin, but Cord feels like a little static charge uh, in his fingers as you pull away. I just laugh <laughs> and put it into the jar. Take mm -hmm. out some more hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he gives you. Are you going to give him? Are, are you? Yeah, going I serve to him. Just give him the wine. I mean, I'm assuming. I just go over to the shelf and, you know, look, whatever looks like wine, that's what I give him. Okay. All right. So you see some sort of, like, reddish liquid in a in a bottle. That's probably wine. <laughs> you go ahead and pour it in there. And, uh, and so, Corey, you have a wine. Make a toughness test when you drink it. Oh, really? Yeah. Get together. Uh, nine. Okay. So here's the thing: you you drink the wine, but you kind of drank a little too fast. You hadn't eaten anything in a few hours, so it hits your like stomach, me. and you feel pretty ill, pretty green around the gills just from one drink. And you feel a little, little tipsy. Tipsy I wipe, and nauseated. I wipe down the counter and uh, Mr. Schultz, is there anything I can get for you? How are you feeling? <laughs> feeling good today. I'm He's uh Aaron, you've got two shark teeth embedded in your head currently. I like the I like the look. It's working for you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Poor you, Greg. <laughs> And then I uh, use the uh, I use the dish rag to uh, wipe out a glass and squeeze the rest of my chicken into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. And um, as you look away, I'm going to pour it down my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> he is, yeah. <laughs> so he waits, yeah, he waits for you to turn. But then everyone else, you see him do this. He pours it in his shell, pours it on his neck. <laughs> we don't judge in this establishment. Continue wiping down the counter. Does which which Chris has seen him do already. So Does it stay in his shell? Or does it like <laughs> slowly like leak out? It's going to have a bunch of viscous. Well, I imagine it's like his shell. You know how like when a turtle, like here's it's the, the plastron is the bottom of the shell. And it's got like, it comes out of here. I imagine like it's like a little bowl. You know, if his neck is out, it's like, it looks like a little bowl almost on the inside. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Because here's his neck, and then there's this little space right here of like shell, and then down in there, the it's you know. So we kind of looks like a uh, was, it looks like a bird bath right now, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes. He, last time, what happened was he was Chris offered him a drink, and he didn't want to drink it. So he he rolled to see if he could like trick Chris into thinking that he drank it. 
but like he just blatantly dumped it all over his neck. <laughs> and so, and, but Chris was like, maybe that's just how turtles drink. I don't know. Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys hang out at the bar for a little while. Uh, Chris, is your keg in there? Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go up to 12 Finger Pete. And I'm like, okay, well, I got this cask. You want to buy it for the bar? You guys don't have any room? Well, I mean, I can't really speak for the owners, sir. You're not the well, owner? Of course not. I'm just assisting in this time of trial. Oh. Okay. He's taking what? direct action <laughs> and deciding that he's going to use that action to open up the bar. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is a mighty fine keg, and I, I think you could do uh, do worse than to sell it to them. I think we should just put it in, and then because they're going to buy it. Oh, they right? totally are. I mean, if you like, I don't know, take an equivalent amount of value of stuff. That's just fair. Yeah, they got there's some nice stuff in here. I know they could clearly afford a you know a quality you know keg like that. They would be fools not to, sir. I think has fancy bottles. I like me a fancy bottle. You hear some some uh, the floorboards above you or the ceiling, I guess for you it sounds like it's creaking, like someone's walking up maybe on another floor. Oh. That's probably right. them. That, 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 yeah. that's, that's probably the owners now. And you I hear mean, like foot, you hear footsteps, and, and you notice that there's like a, a door uh, behind the the counter next to Kevin or next to Pete, and you see the door like slowly creak open, and there's a tiny man, bald, and he has. Uh, a mustache that connects to his mutton chops. And he points uh, a very antique looking crossbow in your direction. He goes, what the hell are you doing in my bar? And like, hey, are you going to buy this cask or, of rum or not? I mean, after all the talks, or I mean, you'd be a fool not to. He goes, what the hell are you talking about? And the cask. Everybody's talking about the cask. You didn't hear about the cask? I'll be like, you don't, <laughs> you don't have any rum. You've got rum. People are here. Didn't you see what's going on out there? People want to drink. That's why you're open, right? Business is booming, sir. He he tells you that the, he's like, all oh, my rum shipment is supposed to come in tomorrow. But he's like, but why are you in here? You don't work here. So get the hell out. And we're here to drink, and you're, the sign says you're open. The sign does he say looks, open. And the door was the unlocked. Sign, and then he looks at you and sneers. And he's like, what are you, some kind of con artist? And starts pointing his crossbow at you, Kevin. I, sir? No. Toby has been accused of that at times, but he's working on it. He goes, who the hell's Toby? Toby. And you just point to Toby. Is Toby yeah. just sitting on the setting? Toby's on, just yeah. sitting on the bar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just sitting on the bar. Yeah. He looks at it, he says, that's a cannonball, moron. <coughs> he doesn't like to talk about that. He just goes, wanna... get out of here! And he goes to hit you with the butt of the crossbow. Make an agility test, Kevin. That is a 19. Okay. Damn. He tries to hit you, but you undulate out of the way. I He's want... very red in the face now, and he's just like, yelling, get out of here, and he's swinging the crossbow from side to side. I want to try to show him the ship in a bottle. Be like, wait, hold on, look. Look at this thing. Make a presence test. So he's pretty worked up. Um, that is a 10. Okay. So he's he's too worked up right now. He's very pissed off. So he's not even like you try you lift up try to show him, but he's his eyes are focused on Kevin right now. He is trying to just bash Kevin with the butt of this crowbar or not crowbar crossbow. Uh, yeah, well, I can so tell why there was. 
I can tell why there was nobody behind the counter now. Do you treat all of people who work here like this? <laughs> After all I, the work uh, I went into making drinks, serving grog, <laughs> cleaning the hair out of your jar, <laughs> and this is the thanks I get? I'm just going to... I'm going to slam my wine and I'm going to get my car and I'm going to walk outside. <laughs> okay. I'm going to trip him. Okay. Me? <laughs> no, not you. Oh. Uh, the bar he owner. his other arm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Chris, are you going to just run around the other side and trip him? Yep. Okay. So you run around and try to do that. So so make an attack roll. Uh, just a, so just a strength test. 16. Okay. Uh, roll a d2. Or just any die, then odds it's one, evens it's two. Um, one. Okay. So you run around the other side of the bar as he's trying to hit Kevin, and you kick him in the back of the knees, and he falls backwards and goes, ah! And you hear him, like when he falls, he bumps his head on the floor pretty hard. Uh, and he goes, ah! And reaches back and rubs his head. But he doesn't, you don't see any blood, but he bumped it. But he's laying there. He's got the crossbow in one hand. He's got the other hand on the back of his head. Somebody grab his crossbow. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Make a strength test. So just roll d20 and add your strength bonus or penalty or whatever. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Yep. So you reach down, you reach over the bar, grab a hold of the crossbow, and yank it out of his hand. He goes, Hey, and he's like reaching for it, trying to grab it, but you pull it away before he can before he can really react oh, properly. Yeah. So now he's unarmed on the floor. What are you guys gonna do? Turtle with a crossbow. Two bits. <laughs> Oh yeah, so so Aaron, if you want, you can add a crossbow to your inventory. Uh, I will say this though, he does try to uh, kick at uh, Chris with his boots. Tries to kick you with the knee. Uh, so roll an agility test. Oh, he probably got me. I got a five. Okay, so. He kicks you. He kicks you in the knee really hard, and like you hear your knee pop. You take two damage. Oh God! He like when he kicks you. He's got these these boots that he slipped on. He's in his he, he's in his night clothes, but he's got these like big rubber boots on, uh, or big leather boots on. I mean, and he <laughs> they're not tied. Shit. And, but he he kicks the shit out of your knee with the with the heel of one of them. Forgot to roll for. Uh, I, I forgot to roll for armor. Oh yeah. I say Toby no, and then go ahead roll, and roll him off, off the counter onto him. Okay. <laughs> that is a thirteen. <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, you hit. So roll for dropping a cannonball on someone. Uh, I think the higher up you drop it, the more the higher the damage die will be. So I'd say just rolling it off on to him on the floor with off the potential the of it. Floor. Yeah, yeah. I would say like roll a d4, just a one d4 for now. That's not bad. Uh, two. No. So you roll, Toby. You say, Toby, no, you roll. And he lands on the man's uh, hand and crushes two of his fingers. And he screams, he lifts his hands up, and you see his fingers are all crunched up. He didn't mean it, sir. He ah. just hates he hates it when people call him a cannonball. <laughs> it reminds him of his rough childhood. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, I'm outside. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot. Uh... Chris or Aaron, do either of you want to react? Or are you going to just let that be between them? He did just kick, kick Chris in the knee. Yeah, I'm. I'm mad about this. I'm going to, going to pull my rifle, my musket, 
pointed at him. Uh-huh. Like, are you gonna buy this cask or not? <laughs> he goes, ah, hey, and he like with his other arm, or well, he has his his injured hand, and then with his other arm, he like puts it across his face. He goes, no, please, please. He says, take what you want. Please, don't, just... he's like, don't kill me. Okay, I mean, that seems fair. Yeah, but like a hundred silver for the cask. It's really good rum. He says, why you you still want me to buy something? <laughs> We're not thieves, sir. We're businessmen. I wiped out the counter some more. He goes, okay, okay. He's like, help, help me up. I help like, him up. Okay, you help him up. Toby. He's like, oh. I go over to Toby. <laughs> He's holding his hand and just rocking back and forth. He's like, okay, come on up, upstairs. And he starts walking up the stairway if you guys want to follow him. Okay. And uh, so he walk he walks up, you walk through kind of a narrow passageway. Your uh Aaron, your shell kind of scrapes the sides of it. But you guys get up there and he goes into his bedroom and he pulls out this strong box and pulls out a little key, undoes it. He says, How much did you want? A hundred silver. Minus whatever you want to charge for the crossbow. I like the look of that turtle with a crossbow. Okay. He says, okay. Oh, which by the way, Aaron, uh, you see looped around his bedpost is a bandolier that has, uh, let's see. Has six crossbow bolts in the bandolier. Make sure you okay. go with the the, kit, the bandolier thing, because otherwise, you know, he's not gonna he's it's not gonna mean much. Toby thinks you should also buy it because you know it accessorizes the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, uh, Aaron, the damage on the crossbow, by the way, is one d eight. Okay. Um. He reaches out into, or he reaches into the strong box, and he pulls out this little purple velvet bag and hands it to Chris. He goes, "Here, just take it, please." I'm like, did you count this? <laughs> he goes, "No, but it should be enough." Okay, but I just want to make sure you're not overpaying us. He I goes, don't want you to goes, be like he goes, people that fuck, be robbed. He, goes, he says, "Fine." Count it, and he sets the bag down and opens it up. He's like, "Count it." All right. Well, how much do you want for the cross? He's like, uh, he says, uh, "I don't thirty gold pieces." Actually, wait a second. Let me hold up before let's let's rewind just a second. I'm actually just going to look and see how much a cross is because I don't want to. I want to try to. You know, we're really pissing this guy off. Do my. Off. Do my do my cook it by the book. What you say? What did you say? I said we're really pissing this guy off. <laughs> we done a valuable service. He made silver. He silver. He would have got a cask of rum. No, he would have been less pissed off if you guys would have just robbed him. Yeah, I mean, say like it would be like thief, less annoying to just take yeah. everything. What well, what's he like? gonna do? Tell the police that we came and opened up his bar and bought things from him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's. That's smooth. He says 40 silver for the cross, though. Well, that's not bad. Tell you what, I'm feeling generous. Yeah. I'm going to throw in this ball of hair. Are you just going to throw it at him? Or... I'm going to send it into his uh, lockbox. Okay. You send it in there, and he looks down at it, and looks at you, and he just looks... He looks so angry, but, like, he's just trying not to... He's just gritting his teeth. <laughs> He's like, now please just leave me be. Oh, we'll count are out. Are, what are you guys counting it? Yep, we're going to count out 60 silver and then we'll be on our way. Okay. So, do Let's I do pay business for the crossbow? No, Chris got it. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Did you get those bolts too? Yeah, and yeah, you, you have six crossbow bolts. So, you just add that to Sweet. your inventory also. Awesome. Now, I already had a, uh, oh, crap, sorry. Okay. I, already I, hear had a, I already had a bandolier. So, oh, okay. with a crossbow. so now you've got two. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. You All can right. accessorize. You can use two bandoliers, but one of them has mm. a little has little uh, strappies for your your bolt, your crossbow bolts. Cool. Uh, yeah. So and she's like, please, he's like, please just, please just go. He's like, I mean, if you really don't want sign. people in here, you should really flip the sign back so people don't get confused. He says, I got a tip to my hand. He's like, please just turn the sign around and shut the door on your way out. <laughs> All right, see you later. <laughs> he just waves, waves you off. <laughs> <laughs> and he like comes downstairs and like he makes sure he makes sure that you guys leave and he goes and locks the door and you just as you're walking away you just hear him yell fuck really loud <laughs> what a strange situation for that man very strange <laughs> so you guys are outside uh, it's still very late at night people are still you see more people down at the beach now Talking to the sailors that uh, got in the shipwreck. I was gonna say marooned, but I think marooned is more like you get taken somewhere and left, right? Yeah. What is Shanghai? Is that when you sneak up on somebody? Uh, that's yeah. You hit them in the back of the head. You go out to sea, and then they have to, you know, stay on the boat. Otherwise, you get tossed out. So Orin. is being marooned a side effect of being Shanghai? No, marooned would be like the ship goes down and you're stuck on an island. Yeah, oh, so they are marooned. So they actually are marooned. Currently. I it's, I guess it's usually more well, of a uh, exactly. abandoned I, island, but or yeah. that yeah, like a, like a desert island. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, so no, not like you can't really be marooned in a place where that is, uh, so that has been turned into, uh, a civilization. I mean, they could or, argue or, the point if they really, really wanted to get into the semantics of it. Yeah, but by then nobody would care. Yeah, no one. This like anyone hearing this part of the. Yeah. Of the session, like, who gives a shit? Yeah, they're stuck on the. They're stuck there. That's all. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them, though, are still on that sheep <clears throat> island. On the sheep island, like I said, uh, along with a few livestock, and there are some livestock that went on to whale fall as well. And you notice that uh, some of the shadier characters in town. You see three of these kind of grimy looking guys. While everyone's paying attention to shit going on down at the beach, uh, they pick one little goat up under their arm, and then the others they grab by one of them grabs the one of the goats by the horn and starts dragging it, and the other one ties a rope around the neck of another one. They start taking them down an alleyway. All right, I'm gonna be like, "Hey!" They just keep going. I'm interested too. I'll say, "Hey." <laughs> I mean, I don't want to feel left out. These people yeah, seem like they know what yes. they're doing. So I will also they, say, hey. They start moving faster, like trying to get away faster. You've I'll got your, your, dope, like your goat tied up wrong. I mean, that's rude. If somebody says, you hey, you have to follow? respond. Are I am now. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you guys start running after them. They start trying to run faster. Uh, the one, uh, The one with the goat tied up around the neck. He's trying to pull it, but the goat is resisting. The only one who successfully runs off is the uh, the one that's carrying a goat under their arm. The guy who's pulling on the goat's horns, oh. he sees you guys coming and he just lets go of the goat and starts running with the guy who's holding the small goat. I have to I have to get off for a second. I'm sorry. That's okay. No I'll be right back. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so the guy who who had the goat uh, by the rope, he lets him go of the rope and pulls out a machete. Oh. And he doesn't, you see me just standing there, he's got these like dirty sh shorts on, he doesn't have a shirt, he's like all sunburned and got scratches on the sides of his shoulders and face. And he opens his mouth and he shows you a mouth full of four to five, maybe six teeth. Uh, and he just hisses and he says, stay back! He swings his machete from side to side. I was like, what are you doing? He says, none of your goddamn business. The goat just starts to run off into the jungle. I look like, at him uh, right in his eyes 
and I say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> he says, fuck off, I'll cut you. Like, and, and he swings listen, his we... machete at you, Kevin, so make an agility test. That's another 19. I like this die. He yeah, swings at you, just, you're like, just sort of undulate out of the way. <laughs> With a smug look on your face, I—I I don't know if I can do smug. My face is just mostly can. teeth. My face is mostly just teeth. Yeah, you're just like, <laughs> and your little mouth because you know they have those esophageal teeth. Yeah. It it pops out and it like it's weirdly and grotesquely like, yeah, it's like <laughs> you know, <laughs> like from aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he's just he's just swinging wildly and he starts to run away from you guys beep, 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 beep. next time other, tell you right the other guy that was being pulled on it just stands there and looks at you guys but the other guy starts running away what did well, that's rude before? he still didn't answer your question oh I was gonna yell at him it's like hey you know this is what happens when you don't tie your goat your goat up the right way. He just run, he just tears off with trying to catch up with the other guys. Mars, no! Oh my god. <clears throat> Sorry. It was like a 3D game. movie. A tiger leaps out of the ground. You know. <sighs> anyway, uh so so yeah, so the guys run off. They abandoned the two goats. Um are you guys gonna continue chasing him or are you going to stop? I just wanted to tell him about the rope being wrong. That, that I don't think it. they're in a good place right now to receive advice. They seem sort of agitated. Yeah. <laughs> we should probably take these goats back to the bar just in case they come back. Put the goats in the bar. For, yeah, so well, obviously, safe. if you let them out, they're going to get lost. Okay, yeah, let's go put the he goats. He seemed like the a guy who knew where stuff was. Yeah. The goat on the rope is still standing there. It, it, it's a uh, Chewing on a little piece of, uh, like a little piece of, like a tin can, and it's just I, like licking the inside of like the where the, like whatever the residue of whatever was inside the can. It's like licking it. I give uh, it some the other Spanish moss. Remember, ran off into the jungle. You have to feed it some Spanish moss. I give it some Spanish moss. Okay, it re it like looks looks up and sniffs at it and then starts eating it. Um. So, but, but the other goat runs off. It ran off into the jungle. If anyone, do you want to pursue it or do you want to just leave it be? We can't save every goat, but we can save this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I'm going to um, be like, what the fuck did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to try and get the goat to come with you, you have to make a, a presence test to try to convince it. It is quite, it is quite the stubborn animal. Yeah, but Pete's got his moss. Yeah, it's true. That's I mean, true. I mean, I'm not very charismatic, but Toby is. So let me see if he can lead the goat. That is a nine. You try to pull, like, the goat will happily eat the moss, but when you try to pull on the rope, it just plants its hooves down and just doesn't move. It just doesn't obey you. I'll give it a shot. Oh, okay. Fourteen. Okay. That was like so, cool. Yeah, as you have a way with monsters, you also have a way with animals sometimes. So you convince with a lot of, you know, pats and scratches and one of my handfuls of Spanish moss. So, yeah, and a little little help from a handful of Spanish moss. You managed to get the goat to come with you, Corey. And if you want to take the goat to the to the bar, that's that's fine. Uh, yes, I want to break back in again and uh, put the goat inside. <laughs> okay. So is that is that what everyone is everyone down with that plan? Sure. That is an eighteen to pick the lock again. <laughs> The lick, the lick. The lock, the lock is successfully picked once again. I put the goat inside. 
or I ask uh, Dr. Theodore to put the good inside. Just in case those gentlemen come back. Okay, so so Corey, are you going to do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the goat goes inside willingly. Go on, because that's, that's it. Walk, it goes in, and you see it immediately. Immediately, just starts pissing all over the floor. I. You guys want to turn in? It has been a long day. We have done a lot for the community. We collected boxes, and uh, and it was the big fish thing, and then the thing with the goats, and this guy. We did so much for him. I don't think he appreciated everything we did, but yeah, that has been a long day. I want to move the boat because we got some stuff that was probably belongs to these guys. And I don't want them to see it just sitting out in the open. Yeah, that's a good idea. So as you start to going back to the beach to return to Mother, uh, you see there are two sailors who seem pretty drenched, and they're sitting. One of them is like sitting in the sand by Mother with his arm over, like over the side of it, like he's catching his breath. And the other one uh, is grabbing the rope up to unlatch mother and it looks like these guys are trying to take your diggy uh, uh, <clears throat> nope that's you get a shooting over that I want to say hey <laughs> they look up at you and, hey and, and the one who was like leaning on the boat he like stands up suddenly and pulls out a knife and points it towards you guys the other guy does the same points the knife at you. He says, hey, yourself. He's like, does this thing belong to you? Yeah. He's Can says, a diggy really belong to anyone? But if it did, it would be me, but it's probably his. They say, well, we're taking this cargo back, you're looters. That was... And I kind of nervously, like, point the knives at you. Well, that belonged to my mother, who the boat is named after. <laughs> He says, well, I'm taking the cargo back. I'll return the boat when I'm done. You're not taking anything. He says, who's going to stop me? Me. And Toby's opposed to it, too. Well, let's roll initiative, then. Well, I'm going to have a... You hear Beatrice, like, knocking at the... Yeah, she starts getting agitated. She starts trying to hammer I'm going to say, and her, and she... <laughs> 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 well, okay. Actually, we'll go ahead and make a presence test. Or actually, no. I'll roll morale. No, even better. I'll roll morale because she leaps out in a pretty terrifying way. So let's see. She got the big tits swinging. Yeah, they might fly up and hit somebody in the face. Let me see what the morale what the morale would be for just. <laughs> A couple of average Joe sailors. Not too good, actually. Actually, okay. They both scream and just bolt away from the dinghy entirely. They just run down the opposite side of the beach, just terrified. Screaming. All right. One of them says, It's the devil's wife, it is. And they just tear <laughs> off. <laughs> Wait, our conquistador friend is the devil? He's not there right now, though. Oh, I know. Yeah, okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I got it. All right. I mean, that seems like the sort of thing you want to disclose. I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not taking it personally, but. It seems like the sort of thing a guy would say. Yeah. Quite, it was quite rude. It strikes you, Kevin, as being very rude. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but they tear off down the beach away from you guys. Um, and just they leave the stuff behind. I'm like, you know, like, all right, let's let's move the boat. No one's gonna believe those guys. So. Yeah. Well, maybe they will. I don't know. Sailors are pretty superstitious. That's true. So where are you going to move the boat to? Um, Kind of sail away. Like further up the beach. Okay. All right. So away from where all the 
polluters and polluters are at the other end of the yep. beach. Some some people are just arguing with sailors because they you know they want to take stuff and they got caught or whatever. Also, some, but some of the sailors though, like don't really care. They just they're just happy to be alive. I can't really get all my shit on a boat, so I'm just gonna gonna go see where he's headed and start walking and pulling my card. Um, you do see also, uh, the the officers are all, including your Evans character, they're standing on the dock, talking to each other, mm-hmm. and uh, talking to some of the other civilians about. They're just kind of you know. Just sort of going over everything, and they're and they're off. The officers are like stopping people from taking things if they can. They're like taking things out of people's hands, but then you see them pocket some of the items. Except for you don't see Evan do that. Yeah, I still give the sign to ward off the evil because you know he's the devil. <laughs> yeah, after all, I want to have Princess go back in the crate so I could just like go about my way. Yeah, she goes back in, pulls her shut. Uh, that was a pretty effective <laughs> tactic for just jumping out. Um, ah, but anyway, so, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys are like heading down the opposite end of the beach, you occasionally see like <laughs> a like a bit of like a chunk of mutilated person like wash up on the beach from where the sharks are tearing into the bodies. You hear all kinds of like thrashing in the water of different sea creatures coming up and eating dead people. Um uh, you see the officers like yell now they're like yelling at other civilians and they're bringing like these big gaff hooks to like try and scoop up people and like drag their corpses onto the deck for identification and what have you. But uh, you guys start heading down the opposite way. Nobody really seems to pay you guys mind. Um, oh, Chris, uh, you I look for uh, bits of jewelry or whatever that would uh, lead to identification. Do you want to help? You're do, you're doing so what? as we're going through the water, I'm going to look at the bits and chunks of things for you know jewelry that would be used to identify them. Okay. Because once it's been put back into circulation, we know that you know they died. Okay. So, uh, roll a D100. I'm going to have to get one of those. It's just 2D10. We all need one. Yeah, yeah you don't have just a, 2D10. Yeah, you, you don't have a D10? But it, would be, but it would be nice to have just like a giant. Oh, the giant ones are cool, but. Yeah. Uh, 63. 63. Roll a D4. Or you mostly find like just chunks of ship and unidentifiable uh, bits of organic matter. Um, but you do manage to find a little pouch attached to like a necklace with four gold teeth in it. These were probably really important to somebody, and once they pawn them, they could come and find it. That makes sense. Yeah, those look familiar. It. Yeah, <laughs> I know I've seen those gold teeth somewhere before. Uh, and then wait. So how many of you? You can't all fit the boat. Oh yeah, Corey, you're walking. On the boat. Yeah, you're walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the other guys can. Because yeah, it, it fits four people. Yeah. Muna, what are um, you doing? Who are you talking to? Aaron's dog. Oh. Being She's crazy. ruined everything. <laughs> was that the, the one who was laughing earlier? Laughing at some delicious aqua? <laughs> no. I had to let one of them out earlier. And she was. I thought you said laughing earlier, but now that makes so much more sense. Yeah. I thought you said laughing too. <laughs> oh, like it was laugh, like the dog was laughing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at the water as dogs are known to do. Yeah. 
They thought I, I wanted like to be hilarious. Well. I don't like that one bit. Uh, so, what are you guys going to do now? You're just kind of sitting, hanging out by Chris's boat. I'm assuming that he's tying it to something. Um, unless you guys just want to go out for a little little stroll in the water. No, there's that shark in there. Yeah, I mean, well, there's more than one shark in there, buddy. <laughs> buddy old pal. Um, but uh, eventually, more people start going back into their houses as the guards start brandishing their flintlocks to kind of try and chill people out and get them to go back home and show them who's boss. Because, you know, people really chill out when they get a gun waved at them. But uh, they, he, you know, they make sure that they go back inside and, and uh, lights start going out um, in people's houses and stuff. And so things eventually return to calm. You just hear the lapping of the waves, not the laughing of the waves, the lapping of the waves <laughs> against the rocks. How far Are away is at a lighthouse island? Well, you'd have to swim quite a bit to get across there. Like, it doesn't connect to the island that you guys are on. Like, you'd have to swim a little ways. Or, get, or I mean, you obviously take a boat. Uh, but, I mean, you could do that in, I mean, in like 20, 30 minutes, you can get over there. If you want to. But there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of you know, old wives' tales about different yeah. things. Yeah. About was... the island. But but you see that there are there are sailors there right now. Like you can see like little you can see on the on that island, on the lighthouse island, which the lighthouse is on now. It got turned on after the fact, after the shipwreck. And see like there are two campfires being made on that island. You can also see uh, four sailors are walking up towards the lighthouse, but you can't. They walk around the side of the building, you know, and like you know that the door is on that side, but they go around that side, then they disappear. You don't see them. But the lighthouse is still on now. It's just, you know, shine it away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what are you guys going to do? Uh -huh. I'm curious what's over there. What about the rest of you? Well, I'm wondering if we should, because I'm curious too, because I feel like that's where the story is going. But I think I don't first, know. Well, you know me, I always try to keep it pretty open ended. Yeah, I don't really want to uh, try to do all that at night amongst the chaos. Let's bury this treasure. What treasure? Oh, just all the stuff that you guys have? Yeah, stuff we... Yeah. Well, I want to keep mine on me because it was just money. Yeah. And I didn't find anything, so I don't really have anything to bury. But I Are don't you... lose all my money either. But what if I need money at the lighthouse? Oh, my God. So I would just bury my monkey head. Well... Uh... Bury, uh, I will contribute this tangerine and yeah. I hand it to you. I'll bury <laughs> the 12 gold in the strong box with Chris's stuff. Okay, yeah. all right, 401k. Aaron, do you want to bury anything or you want to keep what you got? Um, <clears throat> I'm just checking. Um, I'm not sure if I can use my mandolin. Oh yeah, I forgot you you have a mandolin. Why wouldn't you be able to use it? I don't know. It's just kind of weird little thin thing. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's a good point. You you could uh you could make a presence test to play it for sure. If you can manage three chords, you can do Green Day. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, I'm not going to bury anything right now. 
Okay. Oh, also, you should add two shark teeth to your inventory because you have two shark teeth that are stuck in your head. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to bury the love letter and these pressed flowers. Put those in Corey's lockbox. I'm going to keep this ship on me, though. Ship in a bottle because I feel like it's probably magic. So, and if they are like a little sentient people, it'd feel weird burying them in the ground. That'd be awful. Right now, the ship is currently uh, just <coughs> sailing peacefully on the little the liquid that's in there, and you only see one person that's above uh, above deck who is just there's someone behind the the helm and they're just turning the. <laughs> just driving the ship. I want to wave at him. I want to know if he can see me too. Make a presence test. That's very cute. Well, like, what if they're not aware of us? Oh, it one? would be like a human being waving at an ant. Mm -hmm. I got a 15. Uh, so you wave at the little figure. And you notice that he looks startled. And he starts going like this, like putting his mouth on the, or his hands on the sides of his mouth. And then you see all these other little people appearing and they're all flinging ropes around and messing with all kinds of grabbing little <laughs> weapons and things. And his, his little cannons on the sides of the ship pop out of those little, and they start firing little cannons. And you see the cannonballs, and you just hear like a tight, like a tiny little sound from from <laughs> from all of them as they're hitting the hitting the glass. Oh, I want to open it up and try to listen to them. <laughs> you you open it up and you listen to it, and you it just it's suddenly so loud. Make a toughness test. It's like it suddenly sounds like you're in the middle of like some sort of like just ship battle like you hear like exploding cannons and people screaming yelling and firing you know their guns what'd you get uh, 14 okay so you listen and you go ah you manage to like put your hand up over your ear but it's and your ear hurts uh and it starts ringing but eventually you start to your you know your hearing goes back to normal but it was just just shockingly loud when you put your ear up to the bottle. Okay, so it's still just that loud. It sounds like we're actually air. No, around. only only when you put your ear up to it. But as as you like, you flinch. Like now, okay. I can't hear it. Like you can't hear it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I'm gonna put. Crap! We're out of rum. We sold the rum. I was gonna put a little rum. In. You have four rum. Yeah. Uh somebody had a flask with rum in it, didn't they? You filled up the flask. No, well, uh, uh, flask. The one they filled found? up. No, no. Uh, last game, somebody filled up the flask with the rum, didn't they? Or maybe it was the bottle, and then the bottle got. It was a bottle. It was a bottle. It was. Yeah. yeah. It was Chris's bottle. His murder bottle. I mean, so it would still have like the eyeball and the blood and a little bit of rum, though. Yeah. Did you yeah. take the eyeball? Did you take the eyeball? It fell out into the bottle, didn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they got the grime yeah. in. Yeah, because you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so you have a little bit of rum. Are you gonna pour all that in the bottle? No, because I feel like the the blood would be bad for him. <laughs> too much blood. Probably. Not good for you. You don't want to have too much. You don't want to be bursting at the seams with blood. No. Too much blood is a bad thing. Just turgid, uh, turgid with blood. That is why when you get cut, it comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it wants to be out. It's the natural right. stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's just yeah. too much. So obviously, it overflows. Right. And he's exactly. got the right idea. Leeches. That is you. Oh, <laughs> see. <laughs> okay, so you're not gonna pour anything in there then? No. I'll just okay. put the cork back on. They they fire a few more rounds with their cannons, and then eventually it kind of slows back down, and there there aren't as many shots. And then eventually, if you look back at the bottle, you see that other that tiny person is once again the only one on on deck. 
oh, you should wrap the bottle in those letters so they've got something to like not be so angry about. <laughs> it's like a bird. Throw a blanket over the cage so they think it's nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so I'm just going to stick them in my pocket. <clears throat> okay. Wait, well, actually, so if it's if I set the bottle upright, does their water all run to the bottom? <laughs> so when you turn it, you turn it that way, the ship just gets completely swamped. Like just completely the liquid, like the ship goes turns completely upside down. And like <laughs> they're all swimming. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, and people are getting like sucked out of the ship and they're just like swirling around in the water. I'm write that like, back up. I don't, you I don't fix know. It. I wish you be walking some, around. You see some of them start trying to climb up the sides of the ship, but you see a few others are just in the water and they're just not moving. They're just... Oh, no. Yeah, let's bury it. They're safer. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you bury the ship, ship in a bottle. <laughs> Sam's reprimanding one of our cats. Uh oh. <clears throat> Just with a stern talking to, not with uh, water or a whip or or with or a bull whip or with uh, verbal abuse. She would never, but I I would. With a whip, you know, tough but fair. Yeah, with a whip. Yes, I would whip whip them into shape. I've heard elephant <laughs> noises are the way to go. Yeah, elephant noises good because cats naturally hate elephants. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, so you bury the little ship. Uh, do you guys have a shovel, or are you just using your hands? I don't think anyone has a shovel. So uh, I, don't know how I have tools, I don't know but I don't know if tools would include a shovel. Well, Aaron's that's... naturally a sea yeah. They did. Oh, yeah, that's true. Your time is used his flippers. Yeah. About time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, do you, how deep do you guys want to bury it? As deep as a sea turtle would bury its young. Okay. So, Aaron, are you down with that? Yes. Okay. So, Make a well, no, I'll just say I'm not gonna make you roll for it. Just you take enough time to scoop out some sand and make a little hole and then you guys bury it. Are you gonna mark it with anything? So I do have an ink, quill, and parchment. I'm gonna make a map. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, you could you can take some time to make a map. And uh and so add that to your inventory that you have a map to the treasure. Nice. Smart. Good, yeah, good thinking. We're pirates. We got to bury treasure. Yeah, yeah, I think like a pirate. So, okay, so you would successfully do that. Now what's everyone doing? We survived last game by being smart somehow, so. Although you're still pretty hurt. Yeah. Good rest. That is true. We were told that if we went this far, we would take it rest. So I, I curl up into the bottom of the boat, and put my jacket over my head, and go to sleep. Okay. So everybody is going to take a rest, then, and I will read you what that says, so you can heal yourselves and, and all that jazz. It says, catch your breath, have a drink, restore D4 HP. But I'm assuming you guys are going for a full night's sleep, so that yeah. will restore... That will restore your health uh, 1d6. So oh. Oh. roll a d6. Uh, also, you have to eat and drink something in order to properly get a good rest. So I chew on some Spanish habit, moss and I squeeze out the rest of my chicken. Yeah, so just make uh, so just like make a note that you either consume you consume a ration or you consume a Spanish moss or you consume a chicken corpse or whatever it is that you're going to eat. I'm gonna uh, cook that chicken corpse. Well, I don't have yeah. anything. I have finished that. squeezing it. You yeah. have the rest. There is yeah. So do you? Are you just gonna eat a raw chicken, or are you gonna cook it? Let's cook it. Okay. 
All right. So you guys, does anyone have anything to start a fire? Does anyone have uh like I have torches? Flint <clears throat> steel. Oh torch okay, you can use a torch. Start a fire. Okay. You find some dry, some dry wood and you make a little fire. Uh and then make a presence test to properly prepare the bird. You know, pluck it and get, you know, organs out and all that. I'm rolling good tonight. I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, 17. Okay. So you've cooked your fair share of chickens before. And you end up managing to prepare. Um, and I'll say there's enough chicken there. It's a whole, it's a whole hen. You can split it between all of you guys to get a meal out of it for each of you. So everybody roll d dix and heal that much. Oh, I'm not hurt. But I do want the organs. Ooh. The, the tastiest okay. part. Do you, that's what you're going to eat? Just the guts and stuff? Yeah. And since you're an eel, that's, you don't have to worry about rolling. No, that is how you catch eels. With fish, or with the chicken guts? Yeah. Yeah, well, I know my grandpa, he always used to use chicken liver for catfish. Yep. So I, that doesn't surprise me that other fish would be bottom feeders. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But you can only uh, go up to your max HP, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can't go over. <laughs> and do we re-roll for our devil's luck? Oh, yeah. yes. So everybody re-roll for your devil's luck to see how many of those you can use a day. And and hey, the yeah, number of that is determined by your class, which Remember, Corey, for yours, since you're using a class that's not from Pirate Borg, it'll say omens, but just roll whatever it says for you for omens. Oh, shit. And for Aaron, you probably need my help to you for that one. Let me see. Uh, for Sorcerer, Aaron, roll a d4. Okay. For your Devil's Luck. And that you remember the the die that you used you uh like if you want to re-roll something if you rolled poorly or if you want to like decrease the dr for something or if you want to make some, an attack do max damage um so i got a one okay that sucks so you only have <laughs> <laughs> you only have one devil's luck for this day uh chris and and uh, Kevin, do you guys have? Yeah, I, I got D2, so I, I rolled a two. Yep, same. Okay. <laughs> I got odds because I roll a D2. So you just get one as well. You get one devil's luck. Okay. So you guys wake up <clears throat> in the morning to hear him. Uh, are you guys just all sleeping around the boat in the fire? I'm assuming I'm down the beach. You're all just gonna lay down the oh I just curled up in the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So you guys get a pretty good night's sleep. It's kind of it's pretty relaxing listening to the waves. Uh but you you're waking up in the morning, you hear people shouting as you see uh like a a bunch of like a fleet of of rowboats moved over to where the shipwreck is, and they're just collecting, they're hauling up pieces of the wreckage. Um, and trying to salvage more items from the from the wreck, um, you see Evan and the other officers are barking orders at civilians, having them, you know, clear up the debris and bring stuff aboard. Um, but uh, what's what are you guys gonna do now? Hmm. I mean, it looks like they got the wreckage covered. We should probably go check out the lighthouse because I saw these guys go around the corner and they disappeared. <laughs> Clearly something going on there. Go check it out. Yep. All right. So four people can fit on the dinghy. Um, hmm. So that will leave Corey and, his, and Princess Beatrice do not have um, an, an aquatic vessel. Well, then obviously, to, for this investigation to work, we should go find another boat. Yeah. How no much idea. does a bigger boat cost? I'm glad you asked. Yeah, we could probably train the little boat, too. Let's see. 
Yeah. Or we could get another smaller boat and attach it to this one. Or yeah. just have two smaller boats. <laughs> I like the way you think, sir. <laughs> two smaller boats. That's pretty funny. I like that idea. Uh, let's see here. What? Do you just want to know for another dinghy? Yeah, for now, why not? One dinghy is 250 silver. I've got... Uh, could actually cover that if we find one. Yeah, I've got plenty of money too. Okay, so you guys uh, go down to the dock and you see uh, a little boy sitting in a dinghy and he's he's just sitting there with his feet popped up and he's got a little knife and he's carving something out of a piece of whalebone. Say hello. Try to sell your dinghy. He <laughs> says, excuse me? You sell boats. He goes, no, this is this is my mom's boat. It's not for sale. Not? He says that he, he like nods in the direction of the people that are picking up the ship debris and everything. He says she's helping my uncle. You want to make a quick buck? <laughs> he says, what do you mean? What do you have in mind? I bet you don't get very much money. Uh, can make you a pretty good offer. He says, he says, of course I don't have very much money. I live in this shithole. <laughs> and he says, well, what do you have in mind? He's like, I'm not doing anything weird. I'm just trying to ask you about your dinghy. Nothing, <laughs> nothing inappropriate. Um... <laughs> <laughs> He says, I can't sell the boat. My mom will kill me. Um, but if you had enough money, you could leave this shithole and not have to worry about your mom. That's right. He, he, we'll make a presence test. We're about to kidnap this kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. 18. 18? 18. He, th he thinks about it. And he goes, I got an idea. Take me with you. Done. I always wanted an urchin. <laughs> he goes, I ain't no urchin. You are if you're coming with us. I'm going to say, don't listen to him. You'll be fine. He goes, okay. He goes, yeah. And he, he runs up to you guys and starts violently shaking all of your hands. He goes, okay, so let's go ahead and jump on while she's not paying attention. And then row right. right past her. I like the way you think. <laughs> so I think, like, <clears throat> Chris and Kevin should take their dinghy, and uh, Aaron and I should load up on this one with the other guy, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So they hold four people, and I have, like, my car, which I really should probably just abandon, but... <laughs> Uh, you can just strap it to the side and have uh, Peters in the boat. The kid says, my name's oh. Beepo. Beepo? Yeah. Cool, Beepo. <laughs> Battle up. He's got a little, he he has these like little shorts that look like they're made out of burlap and he's got a little vest and he has a little like neckerchief, oh. like grimy little neckerchief. And no shoes. So he goes, where are we going to first? I have like a mix from like One Piece and uh, Flapjack. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely. He's a little sunburnt, toe-headed kid that's just got a lust for adventure in his eyes. I want to uh, roll our boat up onto them. I want to take measurements of this kid. 
Okay. So are you, so do you have like a measure like measuring tape or or something? I'm or just you hang it. like this? Yep. Just eyeballing him. In the kid? Okay. Yep. The beep boat. Okay, you go up to him and you start doing that. He goes, What are you doing? Just pirate stuff. He's like, okay, but I ain't gonna be no cabin boy. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> nope, nope. This is just pirate stuff. I'm just seeing uh, if you'd be able to wear my clothes. You just you ask you just saying what? What do you think to him? I'm just gonna see you know if I wanted to give you some of my clothes, if you'd be able to fit into them. What are you up to? They would be, they would be way too huge on him. <clears throat> like he's a he's a skinny like emaciated little boy. Okay. He's got very tough feet though. They're very calloused. Uh, uh, what am I up to? Ghost class. If I die, I have to jump into a new body. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot. I so forgot I was, about that. It's going to be sick. Get, I gotta I mean, get, he eyes you suspiciously, but he allows you to do it. I got to get CC some water. I'll be back. Oh. oh. But he does ask you guys, though. He, he asks you where, where you're going to go first. The lighthouse. He goes, the lighthouse? He's like, I don't want to be no sheep. He goes, I heard all kinds of awful stuff about that place. Mostly sheep related. Tell me more stuff about sheep. He goes, I don't know. They smell like shit. Sure. And he says, and they're delicious. He said his best memory ever was one one year in the winter solstice. His mom managed to get a hold of some only partially spoiled uh, button and he ate it and he only got sick for one day. That would be a glorious day. Yeah. He said it was the best thing he ever tasted. Well, we did just rescue a goat recently, so we should be like, like on the side of the sheep, so it'll be fine. We could always kill they a sheep. Smell your, they could smell your the, sh the goat on you. What did you say? You could always kill a sheep? You could always kill a sheep and let this kid eat it. That's true. You could. We should find him a sheep. You should. Let him eat it while it's alive. So it's oh, fresh. my God. Well, that's how you know it's fresh. That's how you see. know it's fresh. Beepo is a... He's, you know... He's an innocent. He uh, he's a blank slate. So I mean, you could corrupt him into eating a. Potent, you could potentially corrupt him into eating a live sheep. I don't know. It just depends. We'll see what the dice say. But uh, so so you guys plan on going to the lighthouse? Are you guys just going to go ahead and take off now? He urges urges you that you you should leave because leave now because he wants to leave before his mom realizes what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He like kind of laughs to himself. He's like, she's gonna be so pissed. <laughs> so he's like, all right, boys, let's go. And uh he starts uh starts rowing in the direction of the lighthouse. Um it doesn't really matter who rides where, everybody can pile in the two different lighthouse or the two different uh dinging on the way to the lighthouse. So you guys um <clears throat> end up you know going landing there's there's not like a dock at the lighthouse so you just kind of go up against the shore up onto the like a side that's not as uh not as in clear view like further away from the um further away from the the shipwreck um so you guys get on get onto the island and you do see sure enough up on top of the hill there's a herd of wild sheep. You can see they just got very tangled, matted wool. They never get shorn or anything. So they look like just big puff balls almost with horn. Like some of them have horns sticking out. <laughs> and they're just grazing away. You also see um, you pass by two uh, extinguished bonfires where you guys had seen the previous night um, the sailors had been, but you don't see anybody. You just see some like tins of some sort of um, you know, food residue with food residue. You see some like empty 
bottles that smell like old rum. And, uh, but you don't see the people. You just see the sheep. I'm back. Okay. You guys are on the lighthouse island. You see two uh, extinguished campfires with some just some trash laying around, and then you also see a herd of sheep with very thick and matted wool, and they're just up on this hill eating grass. What do you do? Let's. I'm gonna go up to the White House and see if it's unlocked. Yeah. You walk up to the lighthouse, and obviously now the light is out. Um, <clears throat> there don't seem to be any windows except for up top, which is kind of strange um, to you. It seems kind of strange to you all. Um, you try to open the door, and it is indeed locked. Oh, that's rude. How else are we going to get in? It's what's going on. I'm going to pick the lock. Okay. That is a 15. Damn. Okay, it gives you a little more trouble. Gives you a little more trouble than the one at the bar, but you manage to open it up, and you open the door, and it's just dark, just pitch black inside. Um, it smells of uh, oil, lamp oil, um, and but there's also kind of like a musty. It smells kind of like musty in there as well. And it's just completely black, like you can't really see anything. Aside from where like the sunlight is coming in through the doorway. Uh, but all you see is like a floor, wooden floor. I'm gonna light my candle so we can see. Okay. Anybody who walked in up. would hurt themselves. What? Said anybody what? who just walked in would hurt themselves. So it's good that we have a light now. Yeah, that's right. That's true. So you guys light the candle. Uh, Corey, are you just gonna move in on it? Like, be just be in the front then, since you're the one with the light source. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go inside and you see the room that you're in immediately. There's just uh, a bunch of barrels of oil. Uh, you can even see like there's like barrels of oil like up on these like kind of these like. Uh, what do they call them? Just like wooden racks, basically. And some of them, you can see like from one of the barrels, like the cork is like, it's like there's a little crack in the side underneath and oil is kind of slowly dripping out. And indeed, if you walk through here, the floor is quite slippery. So if you, if you, uh, if you enter this room, you need to make an agility test. Mm. Yeah. That is a three. Okay. So you walk in and Six. you immediately yeah. your feet slip out. From, what did you get, Chris? Uh, six. Okay. So anybody, <laughs> so everybody slip. Everybody who rolls shittily, you just slip and fall and bust your ass. You just fall down. Uh, and I'm not gonna make you take any damage right now, but you've all slip and fall. You're having a hard time keeping your footing in here unless you rolled higher than. Uh, then 12. I got 13. Hey! Okay. So you manage right. to brace, you brace your flippers against, like, you hold on to one of the racks with the barrels on and put your other flipper on the wall and steady yourself. Everybody else, Chris, uh, Corey, what did you get? I got 17. Oh, okay. Corey, you managed to hold on to uh, Beatrice, and she, like, She's so tall, she puts her hands up against the ceiling of this room and, like, stops herself from slipping, too. Um, and your other hand is, like, holding the candle holder and just kind of shining it around. <laughs> yeah. You shake it. Yeah, you're shaking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's that. There's the... There are the racks of barrels. There's also a doorway to your right, but there's also a doorway up ahead of you. So you can either go right or up, basically. Check out the right one, see what's going on. <coughs> okay. I'll go up. Yeah. So, Chris, you say you're going up? Yeah. Aaron, oh, Dan. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go up. I'm sorry. 
So, so Aaron, you're going to go up, and then Corey's going to go right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Corey's the only one with a light source. So when you step forward, unless you're going to light a torch or something, do you have torches or anything? Yeah, I have a torch. Okay. All right. So you can take a second. You can light your torch. Um. So now there are two light sources. Kevin and and Corey, or not Kevin, Corey. Kevin and Chris are just laying on the floor in this oily room. Uh, I'm going to um take Toby and kind of throw him and slide across the floor to the right door. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I don't even know. I think strength because you're holding on to him. You know, so make a strength test and we'll see what happens. Ten. Okay, so may take me a while. You, you try to well. Here's what happens: you try to do that, but since you're covered in oil, since you slipped, he slips out of your hand, and you just hear him. You hear Toby going crashing into the other room. Uh, are, are you throwing it up or right? Uh right. Okay, so Corey makes the agility test. God damn it! Or get crushed by a cannonball. Oh, I don't have enough. Seven. <laughs> okay. So you're like, all right, I'm going to, into this room. And then you hear Beatrice goes in there with you, and you don't even get a chance really to get a good look at what's in the room before you hear Kevin's voice go, Hut! and then all of a sudden something <laughs> smashes you. Something heavy and made out of metal. Smashes into your hip for two damage. Oh God! But don't forget, wait for me. On. You have armor, though. Remember? Oh yeah. How does that work? What's the die for your uh, your hide armor? I think it's either a D two or a D three. D two. So roll a D two, and then one of you roll will negate that damage. So if you roll a two, you'll take no damage. It'll just kind of like just slips past your. You know, slips across the height and skin. So like one, one, even two. Yeah. One. Okay, so you negate one point of damage. So you only take one point of damage. So you're going to have a, you might have a little bruise there, but you're, it could have been worse. Yeah. Okay. But the cannonball just crashes into the room. You hear it break something. Like if you hear glass breaking as it slides in there. Um, the room that you're in, though, uh, looks to be like some sort of like em like employees quarters or something like everyone always says that there's only one lighthouse keeper that there aren't any others uh but you see the room that you're in has four cots hmm. but they all four seem dusty mm -hmm. you can see like cobwebs and stuff in there it doesn't look like that room gets used very much or for it hasn't been used for a while anyway hmm uh, Aaron, as you're walking forward, you see uh, a stairway that leads up, upwards, and then you also see there is an, uh, like a cellar door. Um, I'm going to go in the cellar door. Okay. You walk over to it, and it doesn't seem to be locked. It's just kind of like a hatch. You know, there's a little piece of rope that you can kind of pull to like lift the door up. Um, so if you do that, uh, you uh, you open it up and you can. It smells very dank, and not in a not in a fun party way, but then like a you know moldy <laughs> moldy sort of moldering kind of basementy way. That's fine. I live in a cave. That's true, I'm and it's sure. also very dark down there. Uh, What's everybody else going to do? Aaron is heading down to, or I'm assuming, are you he heading down to the cellar or are you just opening it up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll head down. Okay. Um, so, what's everybody else doing? I will attempt to follow. Okay. Yeah, to stand up, both of you need to make an agility test. I not really see anything worthwhile in that room. Not really. I mean, you could, if you want to make a presence mm. test to kind of search around, you might find some stuff. In there. That is an 18 to stand up. Good enough. to stand up. 
Nine, so I don't think I stood up. <laughs> you try to stand up, but you're slipping and sliding, and you fall back on your butt again. I got an 11 to, to root around. 11 to root around? Uh, you don't find shit. There's not really... I mean, you don't see much, but but d like dust and cobwebs and kind of make starts to irritate your eyes kind of as far as like allergy wise. It's kind of like, Ugh. oh yeah. Well, I'll yeah. head up to where uh, Michael went. Okay. Well, as you enter the oily room, once again, <clears throat> roll another agility test. 11. You walk in and you try to be careful, but you slip and fall right on your ass like everyone else. Wouldn't it be funny if you guys all like rolled ones and you just all died from falling down in this room? Yeah, <laughs> we all fall down yeah. the hatch. <laughs> you all, yeah, you all just flip and fall down the hatch and die. All right, I'm gonna try to get up again. <laughs> okay. Seventeen. Okay, you manage to pull yourself up and you carefully make your way through. Corey, uh. Beatrice is like trying to she's she's walking through the room like very carefully like on all fours and she like looks at you like very concerned like she wants to help but she doesn't really understand what to do yeah. she's trying to keep her she's trying to keep herself balanced like she's on all fours but she's kind of she occasionally like starts to slip to one side or whatever I'm gonna try to get up I got 18 okay so you managed to like grab a hold of her and pull yourself up and she helps you into the other room if that's where you want to go. Yeah. Okay. So everybody goes into the other room. Chris, is that, I'm assuming that's where you're going to head since you don't really have a lot of other options. Um, uh, I joined well, them after the I clicked. There's, well, there is the stairwell that goes up and then there's the, the cellar. So which, what do you guys want to do? Well, after I collect Toby, uh, then I'll go join them. Okay. So you have to go into the other room and yeah. get him. And then you go back in the other room where you have to make an agility test again yeah. because there's oil. <laughs> okay, all right. That's fine. Uh, and that time I got a 16. Okay, so you make it through. And yeah. now you make it into the other room where everyone else is. And yeah. There's a spiral staircase that leads up. And then there's also a cellar door. Hmm. Not really a whole lot else in this room. It just, it... Yeah. Oh, actually, uh, there is a glass case uh, on the wall with an axe inside. Is it better than my axe? Uh, what's the damage on damage on your axe? Uh, the boarding axe is D6 damage. Um, no, it'd be pretty much the same. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing really too special yeah. about it. I if if no one else wants it, I'll take it. I don't have a hand to hand weapon. Okay. Oh, we go. All right. I mostly so use okay. knives, so yeah, it doesn't do me any good. Yeah. Cool. So take an axe. It deals one d six. If anyone's going to go down the cellar, I'm going to stay up top and just kind of listen. Okay. All right. So uh, everybody else is going down, right? Or or are you going to go up or what? What you planning on? I'm not going down. Yeah, why not? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you guys go down into the basement. And like I said, it smells very musty and wet. And... Uh, and as you get down, you walk down the stairs, they kind of creak under your weight. And uh, it, it's very, there's just like a palatable like moisture in the air. Um, you see like, mu like multiple shelves uh, with, where it looks like, like you know, there would be like space for wine, uh, but there are no bottles of wine. They're just... It's empty aside from from three uh, bottles of or uh, uh, empty bottles with no corks. Hmm. 
Well, I guess okay. this. Okay. Is my arm healed yet for after that rest? It's still broken. Okay. You're, you don't have the, you don't have the damage to your HP, but you have a penalty to, you know, if you were to use that arm, you know. How do I fix? Um, it? Is that just later? <laughs> uh, well, if you, I mean, maybe saw a doctor, or if you like had some sort of like, you know, medical brew or something. Okay. Something like that, some sort of potion or whatever, or just bed rest or you know whatever. Um. But anyway, uh, so <clears throat> if you guys want to like search the uh, yeah, search the basement, roll a d twelve. Uh, d twelve. I know we went in uh, separate. I got a one. Am I in the same basement? Yes, you are. Yes. Your uh, your torch is up, and Corey has a Corey has a candle. Okay. I got a two. <laughs> Okay, so you look around and you don't see anything. You're still kind of like, as you're like wandering around, like looking, like you, your brain still, you, you feel like this, this fog, this brain fog from the, from your head injury. You're still not all there. So you kind of just like, you look around the room and then you kind of just stare at your torch <clears throat> for like 30 seconds. Uh, everybody else, what did you guys roll? I rolled a one, so I also will just look at his torch. <laughs> Clearly, it's fascinating. Well, they both have have light sources. Uh, you kind, but you kind of like you feel like your eyes are kind of getting adjusted to the dark. All right, you walk through. Uh, you start to walk into like just sort of walk into a different part of of the cellar. Okay, and you bump into something you fall down uh and take one point of damage as your hand lands on something sharp mm. but you're in the dark you can't quite see what's going on well, ow. Mm. i will say hey i found a sharp thing <laughs> I don't recommend you hear, sticking your hand in it. You hear Twelve Finger Pete bump into something in the dark, and he falls down, and he's yelling for you guys. Um, I can take my torch over to him. Okay. You walk over towards Pete. You shine your light over, and you see he's laying on the floor on top of a pile of four human bodies that are covered with these sharp shells. Mm. They look like sailors. And they're mm. laying there. They have all these shells like that look like they erupted from their, inside the flesh. Oh my god. And they're just laying there. Their limbs are like kind of crooked to the side and they have these, just these, what look, look like barnacles all over their bodies. Well. And the floor that they're in, there's like a little bit of water, like a little bit of, you can smell, you can smell like sea water. Uh, and you can occasionally see like the shells, like might open up a little pinch and you see these like little feathery fingery things like scraping at the water and then they pull back and tie inside the shell. No, thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd probably back away from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that seems kind of horrible and cursed. As you as you start to back away, you see the shells start to clack like little bird beats on all four of the corpses as they start to rattle and then and then lurch upward. Oh my god. So let's do initiative again. Make this another combat heavy <laughs> sorry, but sorry, that's just the you know, just the way things go sometimes. Do you want odds or evens? Do we want to continue with what we did last time or odds forever? 
Is everybody all right with that? Odds forever? Mm-hmm. I love- we can make other choices. I don't know. Odd has been usually bad for us. Well, in this case, you guys go first. Oh, cool. I know I'm technically not supposed to do any rolling for the system. It's it, like you can do it with like just the, the players doing it, but I, I still like to roll. So yeah, you know, to roll for some stuff. But I anyway, so so <laughs> these four corpses with these barnacles just all over their bodies they both are i mean not they both they all four are standing up they're all kind of like bent at unnatural angles uh but they're standing and they're kind of twitching and the shells clack and they seem very interested in, in you guys yeah i am going to shoot at this thing which one well just I mean, it doesn't. They all, they, they all four just look like dead bodies contorted in unnatural ways, covered in shells. So I guess it doesn't really matter which one you pick. But uh, from now after that, obviously we'll figure like like if someone's like, I want to attack the one Chris attacked or whatever. I want to pick whichever one. This is the ugliest one. Okay. There's one that has a barnacle coming out of its mouth, and it looks like he has a beak inside mm. of his human mouth. Ew. That's that. That one's pretty ugly. So, if you want to go for that one, beak face. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, fourteen. But I get two off. Yeah. Just attacks. You hit. Okay. Uh, but he has. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're at close quarters, so the gun will ignore armor. Um, in this case. Shit. Okay. So go ahead and roll for damage. I don't think that's an actual pirate board rule, but it's a rule. I think it's in the. I think it's in like the black powder weapon. Book. Yeah. That, that is. That is twelve. Oh, okay. All right. So you blast Beak Face to pieces. You blow his like torso to pieces. His arm flies. One direction his head flies in the other direction his body just falls down. And you see their barnacles just all over the place and they, they are just laying there in the blood and seawater and those feathery things are coming out and they're just lapping up all the blood and seawater. Hmm. But he otherwise goes down. Now there's three just standing there. They're standing there in the seawater? Yeah. I stick my hand in the seawater and electrocute it. Doesn't seawater not, isn't it not as much of a conductor for electricity, though? I, have I can't remember if it's, if it's less or more, but it's one of the two. It's salty. Let me... Someone look it up really quick. <clears throat> I think it I'm makes on... it more. Because that will, that will determine what happens with this. I mean, my character wouldn't know, and honestly, I don't know. Yeah, he, he would do it. He, he would do it regardless of yeah, of what the answer is, but but what happens to everyone else will also determine. Does seawater conduct electricity? Seawater is a better conductor to get us dissolved yeah. and disassociated ions. Hence, yeah. seawater is about a million times more conductive than drinking water. Oh shit! Okay, so in that case, roll for damage, Kevin, and then everybody takes damage. <laughs> Everyone takes two damage. <laughs> As Kevin just shoves his, well, 12 figure piece, shoves his hand into the water and shocks everyone. No, no, and armor doesn't negate it. So I'm still feel a uh, jolt of electricity. Uh, Beatrice starts going, Aah! Oh, we're up top. I didn't go down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. Yeah. So you don't know what's going on. No. Oh, well, you did hear a gunfire. Okay. All right. Aaron, what do you want to do? Um, well, I'm going to get out of the water. So that doesn't happen again. Um, yeah, you kind of have to go into, you'll have to kind of go into the other room, like the other part of the cellar, because like the part that you're in, the, the floor like kind of slants slightly. And, and uh, the area that the barnacle things are in, that's where like the water, yeah, like is kind of pooling in the floor. 
So Aaron, you just are you just gonna hightail it into the other room? Um yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. So you hightail it into the other room. You run over to the other room and you still have your torch there. Uh, and as you do, you hear clackery, like rapid clacking noises. And you guys see the other, one of the other uh, barnacle things just starts shambling at surprising speed in the direction of Aaron. So Aaron, make the agility test. Um, 17. 17. Okay. So that creature comes shambling after you and just swings one of its barnacle covered arms at you. And you manage to like retract your head slightly as its arm whips over your <laughs> over your shell. Uh Chris and Kevin, both of you also make agility tests as the same thing happens. The barnacle guys come after you. That is a 20, not a natural 20, but a 20. Okay. He swings his Barnacle appendages at you and misses. What about you, Chris? I got an eight. Okay, so as you try to avoid this creature, it just smacks into you with its barnacle encrusted limb. Uh, roll for armor. You only take one point of damage. Oh, well, hell, it'll negate it. Yeah. Um, but since it hit with one attack, it, yeah. it like smacks onto you and like your armor protects you, but you can hear uh, like your clothes start to catch on its, um, on its uh, other, on its, on its barnacles. So it swings another arm at you. Make an agility test to avoid the other limb. Um, yeah. Fuck. Seven. Uh, okay. Wait, I'm going to use a devil's luck and re roll that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good thinking. Good thinking. Son of a bitch. It's a seven again. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it catches a hold of your clothes with one arm and then it swings at you with the other for four damage as you feel oh. just shark shells smash into your body and rake against your skin. And the, and the creature has you, has its arms around you now. And it squeezes you for another point of damage as as the shells scrape against your body. Okay, so but don't forget to roll. Don't forget to roll armor for all of those, though, or for both of those for the for the, the initial slam and then for the squeeze. Got it. Okay. So, oh. Even so. Two, so two damage, and then uh, again two. Then okay, okay, all right. So then, and now this creature just has a hold of you, and you can feel those feathery things like coming out of the the beaks, and they're just kind of like touching your, caressing your skin. I don't like them caressing me this way. Aaron and well, you guys, just in general, what are you guys going to do? Uh, I'm going to stab the one that's on Bradwick to try okay. to get it off him. All right. That is a 16. So that hits, and so does my other one. Hey. Is there still another one other than that one? Is there what? Is there another one other than the one that's on him? There's one trying to get you. There's one that swung at Kevin and missed. And then there's one that's squeezing Chris right now. All right. Uh, uh, four points of damage on that one. Okay. And then I got to roll for their armor. The one that's on me or that's trying to get me, I want to try to use the, uh, the crossbow. Okay. So real quick, real quick though. So Kevin, uh, do you, do some damage, but as you're jabbing at them, like your knife is having a hard time. Like you're doing damage, but not as much as you would normally because that the shell protects yeah. them from. Yeah, very much damage. 
Uh, so, so you're stabbing at him, uh, Aaron? No, I've got a crossbow that I got earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Try to shoot at him. Yeah, make a presence test. Okay. Eleven. Okay. So you fire your crossbow at him, but the crossbow just kind of deflects off of the shells, and you hear it just go pew, and it just like lands in the dark. Okay. Um. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. You can okay. you can also still move if you want. Or you can just stay where you are. You can't go back through that room or into the room that your friends are in, though, because that creature is kind of in the door, or it's kind of like blocking your your way um, to them. But you might be able, but if you wanted to move somewhere else, if you want to go back upstairs or whatever, you could do that. It's entirely up to you. I will stay where I'm at for now. Okay. I'm uh, going to hear the ruckus and send Princess Beatrice down there to help. Okay. So she starts coming down the stairs. And so she'll be down there to, like, you tell her to go down. But make a presence test, actually. Seven. Okay. So she's, like, really excited. And you try, you're like, go, go help them. But she's, like, kind of scared for some reason. She seems kind of, like, unsure. So she, she doesn't go down there. Uh, Chris, you are being embraced by this barnacle creature. What are you going to do? You're really good about being accepted by the barnacle creature. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to try to maneuver and get my rifle up on it and just give it a little... Oh, no, I can't. You have to load it, load. though. You have to reload it, though, yeah. I guess I'm going to go out with an axe. I don't feel like a, now's a good time to reload if I even can reload in this condition. Okay, well, um, before you can get your axe, though, you're going to have to make a strength test to try and like break free to get to your, you know what I mean? To uh, since you have your gun in your hand, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Because it's just trying to squeeze you. It wants to cuddle. Damn it. It's another seven. Good lord. Okay. So you try to break free, but it just squeezes harder. You feel shells digging into your flag. Uh but it's only one damage, so your armor will protect you. But it's got you in like just a vice-like grip, just squeezing you. And it's starting to like kind of squeeze the air out of your lungs. You're kind of like ah, ah. too much squeezing going on. Too much mm -hmm. squeezing. So for its turn, it's just going to keep you know piercing you. Uh, so roll for your armor. Uh, evens, uh, two. Okay, so it, uh, it's still not doing, it's still not doing any damage, but it's squeezing. It's still squeezing. It just got you in a tight grip. This is a very nice leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be nice after this. It's getting scratched up pretty badly. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Just to take it to whoever repairs leather. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Aaron and uh, and Kevin, both of you make agility tests. Ugh. A 15. 15? All right. It swings its barnacly appendages at you, and you still manage to dodge out of the way. Aaron, uh, 17. what did you get? 17? All right. He swings his appendages at you, and fails again. Uh, by now, uh, Corey, you still hear more slamming and scraping and cursing. More ruckus. More ruckus. I'm going to get try to get be down there again, but I rolled a nine. Okay. All the noises are starting to freak around. She's kind of trying to she's, now she's sort of, sort of like pulling away from from the uh, from the cellar door. Man. Um, I'm just going to go down there. Okay. And see she if she Yeah, she starts whimpering and whining as you go down there. And she kind of stays at the top of the stairs. But she's like looking at you. She's like, 
you can see that she really doesn't want you to go down there. But you walk down and you see Aaron, like, you see this barnacle encrusted monster just trying to grab Aaron. He's just like, managed to like fend it off with the crossbow and just kind of guarding himself as it's trying to grab him. Am I able to go and attack it? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead and try to attack it, sure. I was just be like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Okay. You run up and you swing your your axe at it and it just smacks into the shells and just kind of slides off and you're standing there and then the shells just start clacking their their themselves together like horrible little beaks. And they start reaching out towards you with these tiny little hairy filaments. Mm. What are the rest of you guys gonna do? Chris uh. is still being squeezed. I'm going to stab it again. Okay. That is a dirty 20, which hits. Okay. And then stabity, stabity. Four. Four. Okay. Let me roll for its, for its armor. Six. Six. So you're like uh, 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 stabbing at it just wildly, and it's just going clink, 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 clink. Uh. <laughs> Aaron, Chris, what are you going to do? I would like to try to shoot at it again. Okay. Uh, well, you have to spend a turn to reload, unfortunately. Okay. I will reload. Okay. And Chris, what are you going to do? I'm trying to wiggle, wiggle out so I can get this axe. Okay. Do you want to make an agility test instead then to wiggle free? No, yeah, I, I got a bonus of strength. <clears throat> okay. And it's a 19. Hey. Okay. So you manage to just try yourself free and you pull yourself back and your your leather uh, armor gets like scraped really badly, but it's still holding up surprising. Um, but, the, but it looks like shit now. It used to look really good, but now it looks terrible. It's just all damaged. Oh, man. Uh, but still hasn't decreased in tier yet. Ooh. Or actually, wait, hang, hang on. Roll. Let's see. We'll we'll see if it did. We'll roll. Uh, you roll any die. If it's odd, uh, it's unfazed. If it's even, it's damage. One, it goes down one tier. Man, I feel like that makes it sense is, in this situation. It is odd. Okay, so it doesn't. It's still holding up. It just looks not as nice as it did before. <laughs> I I want to be like super bummed out about it, like more <laughs> bummed out about it than I am glad about getting free of the creature. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, man. <laughs> yeah, like you're more upset about that than you're like you're because your face is bleeding from where it hit you, but you're still more upset about yeah, you're more upset about that. <laughs> um. So now, uh, Aaron. Oh, actually, now, hang on, let's see. Odd, uh, odds it's Corey, evens it's Aaron that the that the Barnacle Beast is going to go for. Even, Aaron, it swings at you again, make an agility test. Eight. What'd you get? Eight. Eight, Okay. So as you're trying to reload your crossbow, all of a sudden you feel a heavy, sharp object or appendage smack into your body. Uh, well, but you have armor, you have your shell, which is a D2, and it only rolled a 1. So uh, it hits your body, kind of pushes you to the side, but your shell protects you from getting sliced up. Uh, however, the other limp does come at you, make another agility test. If they connect Six. with their first hit, they get to make a second attack. Even if it doesn't do damage. Even the first one didn't deal damage. All right. Six. Okay. So the other limb slams into you this time for two damage. So roll uh, any die. And if it's odds, you negate one 
damage if it's even you negate two. So I only had two HP. How does that work? Roll. Well, go ahead and uh, roll a d roll a die. Roll um any die. Okay. Fourteen. Fourteen. So even. So you actually don't take damage from uh the other from the from the attack because your shell deflects it. So like it absorbs the damage. So basically what the creature did, it hit you with both of his attacks, but your shell protected you, so it just kind of scraped and like it didn't get to get a hold of you then because it didn't deal damage with the other attack. So your okay. your your shell protects you, but you see like your shell's like scraped up from its from its attack. All right. Now you're playing but a sor that, you're playing a sorcerer, oh. right? Do you have some kind of spells? Yeah, he does. Well, he only has one. Uh, he can he can summon the dead. Oh, that might not help right now. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Carry on. Yeah. But his crossbow does. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just that he just didn't roll high enough before. But now, but Aaron, your now that you since you spent a turn reloading, your crossbow will be ready to fire on your next turn. Um, okay. So that was the creep that barnacle beast's turn. Uh, Kevin and Chris, both of you make agility tests because you know what's happening. A nine, 10, 11, 12. You succeed. You it swings at you and you manage to get out of the way. Christopher, uh, 15. 15? <clears throat> Same mm -hmm. thing. It tries to get a hold of you. Misses. Uh, not, not again. Now, you guys, your turn. <clears throat> I think they actually have you. I think actually they normally have you roll initiative every turn, which I think is weird. I don't like that. So we're just sticking oh, with the yeah the D and D cool. style, just rolling it once. Yeah, I guess I'll try to get that dude in the door with the axe again. Okay. Oh, nineteen. Okay, go ahead and roll for damage. One. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a three for its armor. So you smack into it, you smash into it with the uh with the axe, but it just scrapes against the beak like clacking shells and it just doesn't manage to hurt it. Sadly. Uh what's everybody else doing? I'm gonna reload. Okay. So Chris is spending a turn to re well for guns. I think it's a little different. Uh, for a musket, reload is two actions. Okay, so so if you but stand there for, and you, for buccaneers, I know it might be different for yeah, yeah. So for buccaneers, let me see. Yeah, they can reload black powder in a uh, single instead of two. That's cool. Okay. All right. So just yeah. So okay. So you'll so you could move and reload um, if you want to move. It's up to you. And it'll be ready to shoot next turn. Yeah. 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 Let's are you gonna stand where you're at and then stand where I'm at? I'm gonna okay. get this reloaded. I feel like I'm at a good vantage point. Okay. Yeah. He might snatch me up, but then I'll just shoot him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be easier to shoot him than yeah. If he does grab you. Okay, uh so Aaron and Kevin, what are you gonna do? I'm disappointed that I can't stab it. So I'm gonna put it away with my daggers, pull up my musket, and shoot it. Okay. Roll that beautiful presence test. Which is not as good. And that's a twelve. Okay, you hit. Oh, cool. And it, uh, since we're at close range, we're using the rule that it ignores armor at close range. And that is 11. Okay. So <clears throat> the creature raises its barnacle covered limbs and lurches forward. You shoot it in the chest and blow shards of, of broken shell all over the room. It falls down into the puddle of blood and and uh, broken shell fragments in seawater. 
Uh, now there are two left. Oh no, there's there's one left. Sorry, there's one left. It's Aaron's turn. And it's Aaron's yep. turn. Yes. I will try to shoot that one with my crossbow. Okay. Go ahead and roll presence test. Twenty. Oh, naturally. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh damn. Well, okay. Wait. Uh, so plus one. So yeah, yeah. twenty one. Yeah. yeah. So natural twenty is a crit. So roll double damage. So roll two d eight. Good lord. Nine. Nine? Okay. Yeah. So the creature like lurches forward and you ram the crossbow right into it and fire. And you hear it just cr like a crunching as the shells break and the the bolt enters its body. The creature is leaking seawater and some sort of like bluish fluid. Uh it's gurgling and moving, but uh it's it's not dead, but it's severely injured. My goodness. Yeah. You, you see just like fragments of broken shell just go just, just, okay. just gorging bloody water from its mouth and from its injury. Uh, uh, and I can't really do anything else because I've used my turn. Right. Uh, okay. And then and then I think that's everybody. Yeah, so that's yeah. every so then there's so I am correct that there's only one creature left, right? My brain is pretty barnacle encrusted itself, but I'm pretty sure you guys killed all the one, right? There were only three originally, correct? Yeah, there's just the one that was the one that was grabbing. Them. Yeah, yeah. So now there's just the one that's that's injured severely by Aaron, and he's going to go after Aaron. Aaron makes an agility test as the severely injured barnacle beast attacks you. <laughs> Um, eight. Okay, so you are in such close quarters with the creature that you can't really get a good. You can't uh, really step away. Do you have any devils? Easy. Wait, do you have any devils luck left? Yeah, you could use. Do you have a devils luck left? You, yeah. I roll more for, if you want, you can re-roll that agility test. Yeah, I have no one. Luck. Yeah, because you said you have two hit points. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thirteen. There we go. Okay, yeah. So it swings at you, tries to grab a hold of you, but you manage to get out of the way. There now it's go. everyone else's turn, and there's one creature left. I'm going to try to smash it with the axe since I'm right there. Okay. Three? You got three? Okay, so you you try to hit it, but your blow just bounces harmlessly off of its shelled body. Um, I do have a broken arm, so that makes sense. Yeah, you do have a broken arm, yeah. so you're kind of having a hard time in close combat. I'm going to see if this bottle's still magic, and I'm going to try to hit it with the bottle. Oh. Oh, your bottle that you... Okay, <laughs> all right, so go the ahead. bottle with the eye and blood in there? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know make if the magic will be off or not yet, but... Make a strength test. Shit. Yeah, the magic's worn off. That's a five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, roll um, any die. Tell me if you get a one or... or I mean, get an odd or an even. Even. You swing the bottle down on the shell of the creature and it breaks the bottle. Oh. Oh. So now you have a broken bottle in your hand. Cool. But it still only deals a D2, but it has a one in six chance of dealing another D2 from blood loss. Hmm. Oh. Okay. okay. But but after it gets after it gets used, it's kind of yeah. useless. Okay. Now we know that it's not a magic bottle. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, the creature is still barely alive, trying to grab a hold of, was trying to grab a hold of Aaron, but it might change targets next turn. We'll have to see. Uh, Toby's going to take a swing at him. Okay. That is a 16 for strength. Okay. Uh, Roll a d4. Yeah. All for his armor. One. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) So you go, and it goes quiet, and just, and then Toby, you just drop Toby. Toby just lands on the floor. The creature like turns towards you. You you see like its chest is <clears throat> like caved in. It's got like the end of a bolt sticking out, and you can see just bits of broken flesh and bone from underneath, and bits of broken shell from the shells getting shot. <clears throat> and it just kind of quivers and lifts its arms up. Uh, so Kevin, make an agility test. Oh no! Wait, that's a twelve. Ha <laughs> ha. I was like, okay, I've got plus three. Mm-hmm. So it lurches forward, tries to grab you, but you manage to step out of the way. We've been murdering him, and then we just stopped and just banged some shit on it real quick. Oh, <laughs> die. Uh, so, what are the rest of you going to do? Did we all go? Well, the creature went and it missed. Oh, that was the yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's only one of the yeah, other. That's I'm only gonna, one creature left. I'm going to fucking try it again. Okay. 19. There All right. Go. go ahead and roll for damage. And I'll roll for armor. Oh. Six. <laughs> What'd you get? Six. I rolled six also. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, that's You're ridiculous. Like, ah. so, or, well, no, you have a one broken arm. You go, ah, and it just still just bounces off. But then the creature goes, Where are you? and like it turns towards you now. God damn it. So I, everybody gets to act. I'm going to shoot it. Okay. Yeah. Make, it a, make a presence test. Uh, 12. Okay, so you, you hit. And, uh, you don't have to roll for damage because it only has one hit point left, and you ignore its armor. So, oh. what does that look like to you? Do you think? Um, I'm just gonna walk up there and just put the musket up to the uh, one of the open wounds, and just fires. So it just explodes. All right, yeah. So the creature just explodes in a shower <laughs> of shell shards and viscera and pieces of bone and meat. Just flies all across the place. And some of the barnacles, when they land in the water, they, like, twitch and they clap a little bit and then they just stop moving. So you all manage to kill these barnacle creatures. Um, What are you going to do now? I feel like it's a good stopping point for me, at least. Okay. Does that sound good to everybody else? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I'd say so. It's like midnight and I've got stuff to do tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, that will be the end of our session tonight. Uh, once again, this was Condor and Crow's Petrifying Pirate Board. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll record another one. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll use this. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. But, uh, you know, tune in next time if there's a next time. Absolutely. <laughs> How are you going to know that? I don't know. Maybe we'll announce it on social media. Maybe we won't. Maybe Maybe we'll announce it on social media and then not be able to post it anyway. (laughs) Right. Does anybody want to plug anything? Well, I don't know. I mean, we don't normally do things like this, but do you want to plug anything? Does anybody have anything they're selling or they want to draw attention to or whatever? Uh, Uh, Donate to your local animal shelter. Yeah. Yeah. They never have enough animals. It's always good to donate more. (laughs) <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I don't think that's what Corey had in mind but no. <laughs> kind of the opposite I think. the more exotic the better because you know they definitely don't have those <laughs> you know tigers and chimpanzees and yeah. anacondas those all surplus llamas sense. surplus llamas they, are where they, it's at because you know they've they got that coat and you can sell that and llama meat did you, I mean well did you know that 
that llamas, if they are around too many people, or I think if, if they're not around enough llam, other llamas, they can develop something called berserk llama syndrome, where they just go completely crazy, and they think that, uh, that humans are llamas too, so they will, like, try to attack you. Because what? They think, like, they're trying to establish dominance. And male llamas, they bite each other in the testicles, so <laughs> if they think that you're a llama, then they're going to try and bite you in the nuts. So you of need to course. consolidate your llamas to prevent this, is what you're saying. So donate llamas to your local animal shelters. He's yeah, make sure llamas have wrong. contact with other llamas, That's or important. they will go berserk. Yeah, okay. I'm not kidding. I didn't make that up. You can Google it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, anybody else? Animal uh, animal shelter. Give all of your animals. No, no give all your no, money. No, no, no. Give all your money. Give some money to the animal shelter. <laughs> Got to keep these animals off the streets. Yeah. yeah. And not, I got a not couple things. people in the nuts. Anything else? Yeah, I got my podcast, the Monster Mashers podcast. Yeah, we, podcast. we talk about dicks and monsters and monster dicks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tying it back to the llamas. I like it. Yeah. And um, also, I'll be, depending on when this comes out, I'll be downtown in Muncie at the first Thursday doing palm readings. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you still do the beetle readings as well? Yep. We do the beetle That's readings. Awesome. I need to the readings with beetles or for beetles? It could be both. But they be so so if, you, if they bring you a beetle, you'll, you'll tell the beetles future? Yes, but the other beetles will do the reading. I like that. That's cool. cool. I like that you do does tarot card readings. Yeah. What's that? My sister does tarot I'm... card readings. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Does she ever do anything in the? Does does she part? Is she part of the Muncie? Um, is there a tarot scene, Chris? Is there a tarot scene? Is there like a <laughs> fortune teller scene? Kind of. You're aware of. Kind of, but not really. Kind of, not really. She does we... something at uh, Cornerstone. I don't yeah. really know much about it though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I've heard of stuff like that at the at Cornerstone. Yeah, yeah. I almost got married there. This is unrelated to tarot, <laughs> but I almost got married there. But then when we went inside, I was like, I don't, I don't like all this religious imagery, you know? Yeah, it's not really me. Yeah. Anyway, that's either here nor there. Not uh, enough llamas so, or beetles. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm pro beetle, but I'm pretty anti religion most of the time. I think. But anyway. Uh, this has been Cosmo hey, Pro's Petrifying Pirate Board. Maybe we might. I don't know. Maybe we'll share this. We'll have to see. Uh, 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 Kevin, do we have an outro for this or no? Oh, uh, if I decide to finish this, we will. Yes. Can we fix it? So we might. We can fix it post. I can we fix, fix a lot of things in post. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. Fix whatever. <laughs> so if you want, if you need to edit anything, you know, if you feel like it's worth the trouble, which. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know. Everything is worth the trouble because I've got no attention span. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, I've been Condor. Uh, <laughs> I am Crow. And, and this, this was is, a thing uh, we and, did. And if you guys, yeah, and this is, these are our friends. And, uh, and, if, and yeah, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Or, we, or we won't. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>